Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to another episode of Build, Paint, Play. I'm Dave. And I'm Jake. And we're joined today by Sean. Woo! <laughs> Hooray! That's me. Awesome. Uh, welcome, Sean Sutter from Metal King Studio uh, slash aka Relic Blade, aka mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, ultimate renaissance man of uh, tabletop wargaming. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, sorry, uh, sorry, it took so long to uh, get in here, folks. Uh, but for some reason, uh, my Facebook is not wanting to let me share the posts that I put on the Bill Play page. So, any, if anybody can uh, do me a favor uh, and jump onto the Bill Play page, share it to the Bill Play community. That would be fantastic. Uh, that would make sure we uh, get lots of folks coming along. Uh, I'll see. I'll see if I can do it. It did this to you last week too. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure. Cursed. It's truly cursed. It is cursed. <laughs> I I will blame Meta all the way. Someone will uh, need to break these curses. Oh, perhaps. Let's nice. <laughs> we'll circle back to that That's later. On. Foreshadowing. I remember <laughs> learning about that. Very in nice. Grade, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so. Uh, let's say hi to everybody who's in the chat. We've got uh, Josh, we've got Jez, we've got Luis, uh, we've got Malev. Malev is here. Uh, I love him. <laughs> I, I figure we'll, we'll talk about your bromance later on in the show. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Not for, to uh, skip ahead. No. <laughs> uh, we've got Michael Went. Uh, we've got Patrick. Uh, we have Dave Hummel. We've got Jeff. Uh, we've got Josh, uh, Josh Sawyer. So uh, just down the road from you. Uh, and we've got uh, Josh from Crown of Command. Fantastic! Hi, everybody. Um, it always weirds it always weirds me out when Josh is like, "Good morning," and I'm like, "Oh, right, he's on the other side of the planet." So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's in uh, in Japan there. Yes, uh, but it says I can't wait. I love Sean now. <laughs> oh wow, that's sweet. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Uh, so just quickly, um, Sean, I'll give you. Uh, yes. So let's have a thirty-second introduction to Sean Sutter and Metal yeah. King Studio. Okay, so I am Sean Sutter. I am an independent artist, is how I describe myself. I um, I make miniatures as my art. So I come from a fine art background, and in a fine art background, you just you rent a studio space and you make art and you think about it and you make it and. And you're true to yourself and coming out of that background, like 
being true to myself is making toy soldiers. Being true to myself is telling these like cool adventure stories and and creating games for people to play and interact with. And that interactive art, like I think fundamentally these hobby games being something that we do to be creatively fulfilled ourselves, while also ultimately with the aim of of playing with our friends and with a community, it's just like it's such a cool art form. Cause I get to make something that's like 80 to 90 percent done sell model kits to someone that gets it to you know 99 percent done and then well you could break it down differently but like once you're playing the adventures the adventures are the finished art so That's remembering the- those awesome roles remembering those awesome stories you're telling with your figures is the final product that i'm making and right. so each person i make stuff for is a collaborator it's just it's the perfect thing so i'm making games uh, I make, I sculpt the miniatures, I do the illustration, I write the books, I self-publish it, run my own uh, game studio, but it's just to publish my own work in general. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's me, uh, independent artist, helping people explore hobby and creativity and my own imagination and combined with your imagination. That's how I think about it. Collaborated to thousands, millions. Yeah. That's a cool, that's a, a wild way of thinking about it i've, I've never <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> funny because like you know like, games workshop oh. might not think oh we're we're creating a half made thing right but yeah. the the real value the real love we have for it is that we saw what was possible in those photos and those old rule books and the painted armies but we're getting model kits and we're painting them and we're writing new space marine chapters and coming up with these new campaigns against our friends armies and like that's the real that's the real art so like i think a lot of people that haven't gone through the process don't know how creatively fulfilling it is to come in at the end of this endeavor that games workshop started and so yeah. i think of it that way for for sure for myself so that i'm like i'm your game master and i'm giving you the tools to be an artist and to be a world creator and uh, and your table is a totally real version of relic blade in the multiverse you know yeah so, that's <laughs> sean cool. that sean that is that is genuinely one of the like most heartfelt and and like really interesting ways to describe how one person's art like yours specifically but, mm-hmm. but anyone who works in our industry like anyone's art or whatever kind of interacts with like yeah. the group mind of mm-hmm. all of the hobbies that we all love yeah, and like it's that's really really cool. I like the way that you. I like I like your take on that. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, so the folks in the chat. Uh, yeah, Scott especially. Yeah, so that's crazy. You learn to do the exact same principles when learning how to be a butcher, except mm. for the studio, and most assuredly not being true to yourself. <laughs> <From that. laughs> he, F that. He's like otherwise. <laughs> otherwise it's, like, <laughs> it's exactly the same, other than the fundamentals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Other than being nothing like it, it's exactly the same. Oh, yeah, I get it. I mean, you, uh, you know, it's a, a man's search for meaning, right? You got you to gotta think about it. You got to find it where you can. Nice. Uh, that's where, must we, where must we go, we who wander the wasteland? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing um, we've got to say before the show, um, Sean, is uh, on your the right-hand side of the StreamYard screen, there should be a um my right or your right uh, it'll be your right your your, um, your right okay, over that way uh yeah on uh the screen there'll be a um there should be a button for comments so you can see the chat oh screen. cool oh cool oh hi right. everybody yep <laughs> great so at any point uh feel free to pop in a, ch- uh, a message Very there cool. or um or just uh read the call out different uh chat comments if you uh so I don't know. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. I'm just like so. I don't know. I don't know if Sean remembers. So, I've I've met Sean I think twice in person at Adepticon. Oh, really? Oh, Ben, my business partner Ben Fail is obsessed with Relic Blade. So the last two Adepticons, yeah, no, I recognize that. Over to get stuff from you, and you're always like, "Oh yeah, I know Ben. He emails me all the time." (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, certain names will like work, but. Yeah, he's yeah, uh, he's. I, he's, I try. He's, I'm he's, bad he's, with names. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, cool. Just uh, quickly, we'll jump in. We're going to do our uh, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, 
I think that's what kids call it. But uh, I did it. I, I'm in the chat now. Nice. I'm Excellent. Like, there we go. <laughs> Metal King Studio has arrived. Uh, that's awesome. Um, so I'm just going to uh, click to here and present. Uh, so sharing screen. I have to do all the fun uh, window bits. There we go. This is the first presentation we're going to so um, I thought I'd pull up this um, image for uh, showing off our sponsor this week, uh, the Army Painter, our season sponsor. Thank you very much, Army Painter. Uh, and they've combined, they're doing work with Catalyst, uh, create a Battletech paint set, uh, or the this is the Mercenaries paint set. So, yep. Jake, I thought uh, you would like this one. Uh, this is amazing. Like, this is great. This is, this is like, this is a Reese's Pieces moment for me. This is like chocolate and peanut butter. It's like, Two of my favorite things mashed together. Uh, I am a sucker for giant robots, and I love BattleTech. I love the 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 world and and the background that they've done. And Randall uh, was just at Rick's. R Randall Bills is like their creative director. Uh, Randall was just at Hoplite Games, which belongs to our buddy Rick uh, up in Lansing, and he's kind of doing a like a mini like Randall World Tour. He's hitting all these different places over the next like six months. Um, so they got to talk about a lot of the BattleTech stuff. Their wave three or their their third Kickstarter mercenaries is coming out uh, very soon. Uh, so this is a ton of new mechs, and they're adding like infantry, and they're adding like uh, vehicles and tanks and things like that. Um, and then Army Painter is doing a custom paint set for them, and that's what that's what this is. So you can see down the bottom there's Bounty Hunter Green uh, and like Wolf Gray. So the and there's Widow Black. Like those are all very like tip of the cap nods to the the world of of battletech so the bounty hunter is a guy who drives a marauder which is this big sort of like leaned over mech with big like lobster arms uh most people have seen that mech and he his mech is painted bright green and covered in like dollar signs so that's his green and then wolf gray is for wolf's dragoons widow black is obviously the black widow she is like the leader of black widow battalion and the wolves uh, you find out later she's like, I don't want to ruin anything for anybody, but she's a she's secretly a uh, Wolf Clan uh, general. But so all the, all the all the paints, yeah, spoilers. So all the paints that are in here, I I believe, I believe these are some of the other paints just relabeled. Yeah, they given that uh, that BattleTech naming in the in the yeah, yeah they've renamed them for for the BattleTech set. But these are all colors that, so if you bought like the Fanatic full range or if you bought like the Most Wanted and some of these colors look similar, they're not new colors. It's the same colors. So like don't nobody needs to freak out and be like, I need to get these other colors. Um, this is just something for like the Battletech fans. Uh, but it's it's really neat. I forget the price point on this. What is it, 20 paints? 20 paints. So it's, uh, yeah, Fanatic paints and Speed paints. Uh, looks like there's uh, metals and technical and a wash in there as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's one metallic, one wash, one or one metallic, one wash, one technical. Uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the speed paints, and then uh, ten of the new fanatics. So, yeah, uh, very very cool. I don't remember how much this is. It's probably, I think, a little bit less than the mega paint set. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, yeah, it would be. This is probably um, in the around the seventy dollar. Yeah, that that seems that seems right. Yeah. But, uh, cool. So, again, thank you very much, Army Painter. Uh, we, they always take care of us. It was it was so cool seeing them at Adepticon. I got like a big hug from Cat, and I always get like a, a big hug from Adam, and like got to hang out with them and and chat. We talked about it a little bit last week, but they're they're the best. Like working with them is is awesome. Uh, and I think we'll be talking with Cat and Caleb pretty soon. So yep. keep an eye out for that. Uh, next up is something uh, on a much more directly personal to me note um, is. Uh, the Art of series, uh, so books seven, eight, and nine go on retail sale later this week. Uh, so if uh, your local store can start ordering them, uh, you can, you'll be able to pick them up in the US from um, GameEnvy.net or IronheartArtisans.com uh, or in the rest of the world from WarlordGames.com. Uh, and then volumes 10, 11, and 12, that's with Roman Lapat, Sam Lentz, and Joshua Lai. Uh, that Kickstarter is coming later this month, uh, April 26th. So I have a link in the notes below to go and uh, sign up for notification and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, and surprise, surprise, I will be talking about this um, for the next few weeks, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
just so you're are prepared. Uh, cool. Uh, there we go. Uh, thanks very much for uh, let me talk about those. Um, the next thing we usually do on the show is we talk about hobby. So. Uh, and things that we've been up to. Sean, coming back from Adepticon, mm -hmm. all pumped up. Yeah. Uh, having spoken to so many people. Um, what have you been up to hobby-wise? So uh, I, you know, I always try to pick up some a new game a, a new, at Adepticon. It's the perfect chance. But I was, I was pretty slammed at my booth throughout. <laughs> um, so at the end, I ran over to Death Ray Designs and got a bunch of... Um, steel rift cool. miniatures yeah so <clears throat> great that, of course written by our friend ash barker yeah. uh who i love and and like the minis are just like they're adorable i mean like they're those are cute mechs and so i went over there and like grabbed a bunch of stuff from austin and getting home it really triggered my imagination because i haven't played six mil games yet right and so it really is it's fun for me because my terrain's mostly fantasy. I have some sci-fi terrain. Um, so like building out a table for six mil is going to be a really fun experience. And so that's what I've been working on as um, using a bunch of scratch builds and also 3d printing some uh, six mil terrain and then gluing together mechs so I can play like that's, that's been my hobby stuff. And, and I've been so busy that mostly it's just been dreaming about it but you know there's like that that sweet it's like the honeymoon phase of a new hobby project where you're like wow what's possible like how will i think <laughs> it's them? the it's the oh man i'm gonna do yeah. so much stuff <laughs> i mean I, you know it's a big part of the follow-through for me you, i'm sure i know dave paints big armies like i think about recipes i'm thinking about colors thinking about like how the style of basing and like all of that stuff so i'm in that like kind of honeymoon phase with six mil mechs right now right awesome mm -hmm. awesome if, if have you, you are you to, um if, if you want messing to really... out with different different schemes have you got a couple of different ideas or do you I, just hone in I'm, on one thing and... so far i'm thinking i might go a little bit because the mechs have like kind of a soft uh like cuteness to them like cartooniness to them uh yeah. compared to like the really hard edge hard sci-fi stuff but it's not totally cartoony and so i'm thinking a little bit of inspired by like um is it called zeon zion zeon the uh zaku zaku 2 color yeah it's the, it's the gundam it's, like a, it's, the, it's the gundam opponent yeah yeah the um the like darker green and lighter green kind of thing for the um union worker force mercenaries and then i have like a corpo group that i think i'll do in like a darker gray blue uh with like an accent so Did like you you picked up red, the star maybe red green versus whatever is opposite of green i actually in the starter is those two factions but i was talking i was like i want to play a full-size game so i actually bought those two army boxes oh nice okay and then like the support vehicles and all the books so i'll be ready to Real I bought the. Stuff. I have the. I have the track dudes. The dudes that are from the wasteland. They're like. Oh uh, no! I was so tempted. I was like, I was telling Austin, like, I need those, but I'll just buy them next year. I, the the only reason I did is because I, I because I play a lot of battle tech. Uh -huh. All of their mechs are have are, have legs, and I was like, yeah. and they're cool. But I was like, I wanted something that is very distinctly not my battle tech mechs. Yeah. So, although now the, I think I might go back and buy the spider dudes. The corporate guys have like have the like spider legs and that yeah. really that vibes with the like armored core aesthetic. I don't know yeah. if you guys I played a ton of armored core one and two. Yeah. Um and like the way they like skim across the ground and jump and stuff. I just was I'm very interested. It, it'll it'll be a really fun project because I normally do fantasy, you know, painting leather pouches of infinite varieties. And so now I'm gonna I'll paint some mix. If you, if, you want some, if you want some cool terrain, uh, mm -hmm. so Gale Force 9 release has a bunch of stuff called Hex Tech, oh, which yeah. is, it's technically for Battle Tech, but like you can mm -hmm. just not use the Hex pieces. Yeah. And then it's for anything, but because it, it's it's that six mil to 10 mil size. Yeah. But there's a ton of it you can download and you can 3D print it from the guys mm -hmm. that, I think it's War Scenery. So okay. War Scenery designed all the Hex Tech stuff that Catalyst, that, um, oh, I'll have to that check Gale Force 9 that. has. Yeah. So. I, I actually I've been printing um the lazy forger who makes full okay. spectrum dominance. Yeah, Giacomo. 
I, th- I think that's how you pronounce the name. I guess I have only read it. I haven't talked to him, but um, he, yeah, his kits. It's funny though, because his sculpts are so detailed and so delicate that they almost don't fit with the like cartoony um, steel rift figures, but I still, I can't get over it. I really like his work. So, so that's nice. another shout out to the lazy forger you guys can, he's on my mini factory. You can look that up, but yeah, cool. Six mil stuff. Cool. Excellent. Uh, just quickly jumping back into the chat. Um, I noticed that uh, you had a couple of questions like, uh, will you be at Nova? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't have plans. I pretty much, I mean, I'm spread so thin. I pretty much just do Adepticon. Um, sure. I was talking to my buds with Black Sight Studios, Connor and Ben, and they're going to try doing more shows in 2025. And right. so I might just like parasitically join them. <laughs> you know, I, like, I, I, made, I made a mistake in the chat. Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff has corrected me. Thunderhead Studios did all of the, hmm. the epic stuff. The, the next, cool. The next I'm going to, I'm going to type that in now. So I, because I'm literally like this week, I'll continue 3D printing six mil train. Cool, <laughs> awesome. Uh, Scott also said, uh, Dave doesn't have the daydream phase of painting a project. While Jake was describing the army painter box set for Battletech, Dave fully painted and based two Battletech lances. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I also used surprised. the Alejo diorama effects to uh, for the basing. No, no, is that not the way to do it? <laughs> it's it's fine. Whatever, whatever, whatever works. <laughs> Excellent. Um, cool. Uh, so starting a new game, uh, going with Steel Rift, which is going to be uh, it's going to be very cool to see sort of how you paint those up. Mm-hmm. But uh, Jake, what about yourself? Um, so I didn't get to work on my army. My my armies just got back from Adepticon. Like they were apparently touring the Northeast. Uh, they yeah. just got back saturday i think they got dropped off at the store um so i didn't get a chance to work on anything uh however so i was telling dave this earlier so my my wife rolled her ankle like super bad on friday coming home from work uh she was she was walking across the street hit some like uneven pavement and like rolled her ankle to the outside so bad that her ankle like hit the ground like rolled her foot so bad that her ankle bone like hit the ground uh, and was in like super pain. One of her coworkers was nice enough to drive her all the way back to the house um, and or drive her back to the train station and get her car. Uh, and then I was like running around the house, helping her out. And I almost was going to be late for the show because I was getting her set up upstairs. We just got her like a, one of those like foot bath things. So she's like soaking her feet in that um, and spoiling herself a little bit, but it's been, it's been a rough couple of days over the weekend. So I didn't get any painting done this weekend, but right. <laughs> uh, I did pick up, Oh, Ooh. I was very excited about this box. It is pretty gross. Uh, there's some really cool stuff. And when we were at Adepticon, I also picked up this guy. All right. Yep. Like the limited issue guy. So I'm going to use him. It's just like another like champion or something. Um, the codex is gorgeous. It, it comes with the limited codex. So it's all like blue and like foil. In fact, I think I got that around here somewhere. Um, the rules are really cool. The, the crew themselves... The crew themselves got a pretty hefty facelift, um, and people were really bummed. Yeah, this is the the limited edition codex. Yeah. So it's like a blue foil treatment that it's got all over it. Yeah. Um, but look through that, checked it out. Uh, I was gonna do, I was gonna do all crew, and then I was like, that's gonna be a horde army. I'm not doing that. Like it's 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 like a gazillion crew if you just do crew. It's they are so cheap. It's insane. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do about probably 1,200 points of crew, and then I'm going to do like 800 points of Tau, uh, but the Tau stuff eats up a ton of points. So I'm going to basically run like three hammerheads because the big thing that the crew don't have is they don't have any they don't have anything to deal with with anything big. So like vehicles, dreadnoughts, titans, flyers, like they're just not they're they're good at killing like basic troops, and that's about it. So I was like I need some punch, and the hammerheads are great. Uh, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a squadron of hammerheads. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do either some crisis suits with Farsight, just because I think Farsight is like the coolest Tau model. Like he's a he's a samurai Tau with a with a, a giant sword. I was like that's rad. Um, and then the rest is just like I think I'm doing like 50 or 60 crew, and I'm gonna try to get six of the rampagers, the big the crew talks rider things, 
and a pair or three of the, the crew talks. Um, they're really fun. Their rules are really cool. Uh, they, they buffed them a lot. The big one is the, the three characters they have their, their army rule by default is basically the whole army gets a six up invul in close combat and a five up invul to shooting. Okay. Which is just like, they need it. Otherwise they would just die yeah. in droves. <laughs> um, but they're really fun. Most of the army has like scout and skirmish and, um, like they're, they're just, they're really, really neat. They, they seem like a really cool army. Um, and and so what I'm going to do is once I'm done with the flesh eaters, uh, my plan is that I'm going to talk to Cat and I'm going to try to get some some army painter from our sponsor and I'm going to paint this entire project is going to just be the new paints. I'm not going to use any of my old stuff. Fun, but that'll be fun. Oh, and I finished. Uh, what is it? Book six. I finished. I finished this. So book six of the Siege of Terra. And I'm almost done with book seven, uh, Echoes of Eternity. And then all I have left is the three end in the death books. So right. <laughs> fantastic. You're almost there. You'll find out what happens. Yeah. Don't seriously. tell us though. Yeah, no, I won't. I don't want to ruin for anybody. <laughs> it turns out Vader is Luke's dad. Mm. No way. That's yeah. crazy. That's messed crazy. Up. I remember when I uh, when that came up as a discussion at school back in the day. Can you, you please tell us in detail? Do you remember where you were when you found out that Darth Vader was? Luke's well, I remember the, the discussion. Somebody said it, and like everyone else is like, "No way! No, that's not going to happen." <laughs> and of course, it did. But uh, that's the uh, extent of the discussion. Um, <laughs> I've been working on some uh, terrain for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, so doing a commission for the AMG folks. So doing the. Uh, the windows to the wonderful um their terrain their mm -hmm. terrain is is really cool uh yeah. i think it's done really well it's it's yep. not crazy expensive but it's it's a little more expensive um but yeah but their stuff is really nice and you can mm -hmm. you can further supplement it by getting stuff from the guys at uh monster fight club they have like yeah they have like atms and like uh, parking meters and fences and like all kinds of stuff you can like, and stuff like that. yeah it's really neat <clears throat> i remember when they when they announced it mcp feeling like oh man like it'd be fun but there's no way i'll have terrain that's appropriate and they've done yeah. such a good job because like i really think it's so fundamental to just people being able to adopt the game and their kits have been great like yeah. I mean, a garbage truck. Like that was <laughs> yeah. so much fun to paint. So, no, he's got I, some I love the, it. yeah, yeah, the I'm little tractor. Some... I I bought that set like right away. So, like that yeah, literally I looks like it. a Tonka toy I had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it, scale, it, the scale's big. I remember yeah. uh, when I built it, I was like, "Really? Are those like cat lifters? Like really that big?" And then driving by a construction site, I'm like, "Oh, it's exactly right. They're they are actually that size. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty like, big. Yeah, yeah, very cool." <laughs> I've got the um, this one. Mm, I I have that kit unbuilt. I'm looking forward to right. it. So the the guys at our store who built our terrain, like we we have a pretty dedicated group that plays the Marble Crisis mm -hmm. Protocol, and so they have a whole they have like two tables worth of terrain. They have everything, and like multiple kits in some cases. I think theoretically they could probably do three tables, but I guess you you want the you want it pretty dense with terrain when you play. Mm -hmm. Um, so they made alpha omega hobby like the they made the alpha omega it's our it's storefront different. so like that's the hobby <laughs> shop and it's like like somebody 3d printed our logo and like put it up and painted it it's it's pretty funny nice that's cool that's good you can connect things like that for sure mm -hmm. um one of the things i uh still always chuckle about it when it was i've never actually played marble crisis protocol i painted a bunch of stuff it's for easy it, and fun to play so go yeah. for it but i love the um that each uh model has a number Oh, yeah. It. So this is a yeah, they're really like carefully, thoughtfully designed kits. Yeah, I love it. And oh, are you? Five. <laughs> and I think it's giant, like giant five on the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's it's only uh like the Hulkbuster suit, or maybe Hulk that can pick up a building and throw it. Yeah, I, th I think it's I think it's 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 both Hulks, the Hulkbuster armor. That might be it. I think they're the only ones that can pick up something like that. Mm -hmm. And the, the fun part, because this is sort of open at the bottom, the, there's a four 
don't know if you can see it in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the, uh, the the roof. So they've thought about where to put that as well. So that's kind of crazy. But anyway, that's what I've been up to, painting some of that and uh, mm -hmm. having a lot of fun. I, uh, I played a game of Song of Ice and Fire last week as well. Oh, cool. Uh, Who do you run? Uh, fun. Who do you run? Uh, I'm running Starks, but it's um, House Mormont, Umber, and Karstark. I don't actually have any. The only Stark I have in the list is, um, oh, what's her name? Caitlin Stark as one of my NCUs. Nice. But yeah, they, they have a good um, damage output. They can take a lot of damage as well. So they're not super fast, but um, they do pretty well. I'm happy with them. Excellent. Um, OJ says, are you going to poster and graffiti it, Dave? Uh, it's a commission, so we'll see how much time I have left at the end. <laughs> um, it's possible. I'd like to do some um, graffiti. Uh, it's always fun to do that. Josh says, uh, zero scale railroad scenery works well for MCP. Okay. Or, or O scale, sorry, O scale. O scale, yeah. Cool. Uh, awesome. Very cool. Okay, uh, so next up, I thought we would, uh, we'd, well, we're going to jump into the meat and potatoes of the show uh, and talk with Sean about all things Metal King Studio. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to um, sharing uh, this image. Oh, so I thought I'd grab this image. Um, but as you told us just before the show, things are changing. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Working on it. Oh, look at that cat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I work from home like a lot of people these days, but, um, but yeah, I, I do all my run my business. You can see all my inventory every, in there on the right um, faction sets and single character expansions and all that. <laughs> And so I act, I do all of the shipping, I do all of the logistics, inventory, all that stuff for my business, as well as all all of the design work, of course. Um, so fantastic. Uh, so how did I guess how did Metal King Studio get started? Was it mm -hmm. did you have you you talking about before that desire to create um, and be true to yourself, so create miniatures? Yeah. Uh, was it I'm going to create a line of miniatures, or was it I have this idea for a game with some miniatures? Or yeah, uh, all right. So because I was I was working full time as like doing my art studio, uh, but working in fine art, so doing okay. fine art fine art painting and showing in galleries on a regular basis. I was doing freelance design for like web design and stuff and ui interact you know interface and i was doing work also as a illustrator doing like t-shirts and posters for events in sacramento and also working on doing comic books so illustrating comic books so between all those things, it became very clear that like that career path is one where you hustle super hard and you get paid as as little as someone can get away with. And then you just get the one paycheck and then you have to try and like find out where your next $70 comes from. Right. So uh, from that, I knew I, I really liked the idea of making my own miniatures game of course like i think we all like that idea and uh that was part of what made me go to art school and that's what got me in the position of being a freelance artist and having my art or art, art practice so um in 2015 i decided to instead of taking work taking on work i would start working for myself and um and in the hopes that if i owned the work so in theory someone hires you to do yep. a job and then and then the result of that work is worth more than what they paid you otherwise they can't yep. afford to hire you so um 
So if you're being hired to do art, theoretically, they can sell that art for more than they're going to pay you. That's yeah. just like, that's just, just the economics of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, if I could do the art for myself and then be the one that sold it, maybe it'd be worth a little bit more is sort of the idea I had. <laughs> and so I learned to sculpt miniatures. I learned more about it. I, I wrote the rules because I felt like just selling like D and D proxies or whatever um, didn't give enough incentive. So I like started really thinking about what, what I want out of a game. Like what, if I were going to play a miniatures game, what I want it to be like. And, uh, and I, thankfully, like I had all those, like a really strong sense of like what I wanted out of a game. And so that was the first game I wrote is called relic blade. And it's highly tactical. You have a lot of control over your character, so it feels more like closer to a a D and D party or a role playing game where the char each character is a more significant presence on the board than in um, a traditional war game where you just have troops with a couple of stats. Um, I wanted it to play really smooth, so I came up with a a game system that gives you a lot of options and how you invest your action points which in this game are action dice where each character has a certain number of dice and you roll them to see how good their the quality of their effort, you know? So they've got yeah. a certain amount of effort and you expend it over time. And so that abstraction led to like a really cool mechanic that has very fun tactical play. You have a lot of control, but your turn isn't very long um, with alternating activations. You know, alternating activations are like very typical now but in 2015 they weren't as common right uh, and but so now everyone is i think most people are sold on that that's a fun way to play games um, yeah but at the time you know you still were sitting for two hours while your opponent did your turn or their turn and then it'd be your turn and they'd like walk away <laughs> while you <laughs> move your troops so uh yeah anyways it, it's that's what got me started right is i was an independent artist and I wanted to make art that I cared about. And I looked at myself and I looked at my studio and the things I like. And sure, I had a bookshelf of comic books, which is what I was doing professionally at the time. Um, but then I had several display cases of miniatures. And so I realized, like, proportionally, I like miniatures more than the other stuff. I like right. it more than landscape paintings and more than poetry and more than comics and i like it more than selling art prints so i just went for it and um and i think my i think people could see the passion in my work and so i was able to build a small a group of people that like what i do and that's been more than enough you know happy i'm i feel very happy and blessed by that community that likes my game and my work because um you know my because i do all the illustration and design and everything myself my overhead's relatively low so a small community that loves my work is like a wonderful place for me because i don't have 10 people responsible where i have to pay 10 people just have to pay me yeah yeah so um when we were talking at uh adepticon uh you're saying we were talking about uh like i i asked the question i think are you in any retail stores mm -hmm. uh, and you said well, you have a set of terms, and if somebody says, "I'd love to stock this in my store," you say, "Well, here are the terms. Yeah. If you, if you're yeah. okay with, sometimes restocks might be a little bit slow." Or uh, yeah, yeah, it's I'm something I'm working on. You know, I think, I think as because Relic Blade is definitely at like a precipice where um, there's more demand than I can meet just myself, just for the just for sorting miniatures with because each miniature it comes and you gotta choose each of its pieces and put it in a bag with a base and then put it with its cards and then package it and be ready to ship orders and you know i you know at if i work all day i can ship like 50 orders right um and 
if I was getting 50 orders a day, wouldn't be that crazy comparing me to like another game, a whole game company, <laughs> you know? So like it, 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 the capacity before it's more than I can do on my own is I'm basically there. So I'm working on figuring out like how I can hire someone to come in and, and do that work so I can focus on creative stuff. So I'm definitely at like a growing point, but it's, you know, I got into it to be an artist and um, a businessman, I guess. Sean, if you want afterwards, I, we should talk afterwards. I actually, I had a very similar conversation with some friends of ours who people, uh -huh. you know, as well. So that might be something you guys could do. So we can, we cool. can talk about that later though, but that's, but that's awesome. That's, that's really cool. Cause I remember the first time I heard about your game was when Ben came into the shop and was like, Hey, I just got a bunch of this relic play stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, Oh, it's going to show me a bunch of stuff. And he was like really excited about it. And Ben is really passionate about he, he like, he has a, a small list of things that he really, really likes. And relic yeah. blade has like made it onto that list. Um, That's awesome. That's so, awesome. well, like I told you every year I saw you at Adepticon, it was a Ben, Ben was like, Hey, mm -hmm. can you get me this guy? And I'm like, yep. Okay. And he's yeah. like, I know he's, a, uh, he's like, I asked him on Facebook and he said, he's near the black side studios guys. And I was yeah. like, okay, I'll, I'm like, I'll find him. Um, but yeah, he, he was like, Oh, you know, he does everything himself. And he like runs his business out of his garage and he, he makes everything and he produces everything and he ships everything. And I was like, that's really cool. Um, earlier in the, in the chat, somebody had said, um, something about they're really excited about the amount of small. Hang on. Where is it? Yeah, uh, scroll back up. No, it's Josh. He said, um, I saw that there are, there were so many here and gone projects in the nineties. They couldn't get any traction. I think that the internet has connected people with the products that they're, that are right for them. And he's hundred percent right. I remember in the nineties, like the late nineties, early two thousands, there were so many little, you know, companies that were like, Hey, I have this really cool idea. And it was a cool idea, but like not enough people knew about it. And it I mean, what are you going to do? Cause like yeah. you, you'd literally have to like dial a phone, like look through a phone book and dial uh, every comic shop on, yep. in the country and be like, do you want an unknown thing, you know, or like, yeah. mail it was, to the, it's it, just crazy. It, it's crazy. Yeah. But now like, but also it was different. Even back then, the fact that the technology allows you to, as an artist, like you can, you can sketch and, and paint and draw all your own stuff. Mm -hmm. And even if you have the digital skills, you can do it all digitally, but yeah. that still doesn't mean you can produce it, but now you can, you have a 3d printer and, and you can do like spin casting and metal casting, which is not super expensive. So like you can do all that yourself. Mm -hmm. And then, now that you have stuff like, you know, ShipStation and Stamps.com, like you can be your own mailroom. So yeah. theoretically, I mean, and you're proving this, like you can literally run it as a one-man operation. Yeah. I mean, that, to point. Point. Yeah. <laughs> and I think part of what inspired it is that that's typical for an independent artist to be selling prints and pencil bags and whatever you can think of. Right. And yeah. so, uh, whereas the model for a, a game company has been, bigger yeah you know and so but uh, yeah i was also thinking back i was really inspired by ira glass's talk about taste I don't, it's super popular or like a kind of a mythical lecture he gave but like that you have if you're starting out you have good taste and you got to trust your taste even if your art doesn't m make it up to the quality that your taste is and then also that they're got they're gonna in the billions of people on the planet there are at least a couple hundred that like what i do <laughs> and so sure. if i can find them the internet makes it possible you know so even if even if only one in a million people like my art style like that's enough yeah yeah so well, that i mean that was that was kind of like i had a similar conversation with um with some again some some other guys that we know and i had said I think one of the smartest things out there is then they, they don't, they don't do a lot of shows. Like they do yeah. Adepticon because if you're doing miniatures, you should. And I think they do Nova cause it's like not that bad a drive for them. And I was like, you guys should do Gen Con. And he was like, well, Gen Con's really hard cause a it's far and it's expensive. Mm, and I was yeah, like, right. But like, yeah. <laughs> but, but if you got, if you got five or six people together and it was like, you know, for example, you, you got like you and Malev and the guys at black site, and the guys at like the guys who do blackout mm -hmm. and like the guys from uh like you got ash and the guys from death ray and mm -hmm. you guys did like one 20 by 20 booth mm -hmm. you guys could literally all have a slice where you're showing off like cool 
individual mini war games and like none of your games are similar like all the only thing that's similar about your games is that there's miniatures like that yeah that's it so (laughs) when i'm at adepticon i tell people all the time like even if you got half a percentage of the people who attend that's a huge increase for a company like yeah it's just like part of it is like the um opportunity cost for me because anytime i'm doing one thing i'm not doing 10 other things yeah. So like, you know, that's, that's a big challenge. Like last year I didn't do a con I normally would do in San Francisco, but because I was able to do that, I could update my website. That was like eight years out of date. Right. <laughs> so, you know, just like everything is, everything's such a scramble for, for me, but yeah, no, it's true. Like Gen Con would be awesome. Um, but yeah, so at a certain point, like I can do more sales by just packing more miniatures into blisters <laughs> because right. there's demand that i can't even meet so. <laughs> um speaking of uh crazy uh demand at mm-hmm. um so adepticon this year you took uh you say i think you were telling me it was like twice as much as you took last yeah. year yeah um, and i sold out on by friday at noon so it friday. wasn't the first day it was the first one and a half days yeah, it, it's crazy. I'm like, I'm trying, but man, my like, I, again, like talking about splitting space, like my six foot booth at Adepticon isn't big enough for the, to meet the demand. So yeah. kind of struggling. I think, but I think told you what Malev said at the show. He said, man, it's going crazy. Look over there. Look at Sean's, sort of, Sean's booth. There's more people than booth. Yeah, it's, there really were. It's yeah. it's always awesome. And, and we we talk about this before. And like, I know there's a bunch of guys in the chat, like like Pat and Malev and Josh, like who are all at Adepticon. And one of the things I always try to stress to friends of mine who are not sure if they want to do that show, whether the, if they're vendors in particular, sure. is I was like, it's a buying show. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, out of all the shows I do, that is a buying show. Like people mm-hmm. go there and they budget knowing like, well, mm-hmm. I got Adepticon in a couple months, so I'm not going to buy this new thing because I want to see what's going to be at Adepticon. Mm-hmm. And then people spend money in that vendor hall, mm-hmm. which is great because like Hank and Hank and his team keep the costs of the vendor hall re- really reasonable, I think. And then you always do like, you're always going to do well at that show as long as no, you're doing. Yeah. They're extremely generous and th- and that's why it's going to continue being a show where you can find cool stuff because like if it, for the shows that like want to charge a ton for the booth space and want to charge extra for you know having any kind of hookup or a light or you know any kind of situation I hate you know you get nickel and dimed and then like and then on top of that getting inventory there all that stuff it can get super expensive for the vendor and you think okay well i'm setting up a store it's a business expense but then when the customer has paid a thousand dollars to just look at a store like they're not everyone's wallets are empty just to be at the show so i i've I've done other shows where people have spent all their money just to come and look yeah so and then they i spent all my money so they can look (laughs) and (laughs) whereas adepticon they're like really generous about to the um attendees and generous to the vendors and that makes it possible for really cool unique stuff to show up instead of just exclusively the big companies you know because the, the people who are already at your local game store those companies can afford to be at a big show and have a whole team of people to coordinate those events yeah. so whereas a little guy like me where i'm like trying to figure out to scratch together enough money to ship inventory to chicago and and like my first adepticon i shipped it to a friend who was driving a minivan and so his minivan was full of relic blade stuff nice you know like (laughs) so adepticon makes it possible for people like that to actually just show up and be vending the like really cool weird stuff so i think i mean it's by design and it's by intention it's like the adepticon coordinators care about the community and it yeah and that's what makes it so rad and it also makes it really easy for all of us to like like the show and and Mm -hmm. you know i mean like it's not like it's not like hank and matthias and tim are are paying and shelly are like paying dave and i to talk about adepticon like no (laughs) No, they i mean they earned it they earned uh, more than our trust uh, yeah i mean it it is it is my favorite show like i end up doing 
I think a couple, I think at, at my peak, I think I did 17 shows in one year, which I'm never doing that again, but, but I did 17 shows in one year and I've, I've done different shows, different years to kind of like do as many as I can. Mm-hmm. But like this year, I think I'm doing seven, I think, or eight. No, 10. I'm doing 10 shows this year. That's a lot. But I was going to do 15. I <laughs> shaved five of them off because Ben, my, my business partner's wife, Ben is his wife is very pregnant. So he's like, yeah, these ones here. I'm really, I was like, no, I just won't do those ones. That's fine. I don't need to do those. <laughs> um, but we were, I was talking to someone, my wife was like, you do a lot, a lot of shows. Like, you know, what if, what if things get so crazy at the shop and things get really crazy where like, you couldn't do all these shows. I was like, then I would just do Adepticon. Like it yeah. is the, like I, it is the, I would give up every other show as long as I could do Adepticon. Yeah. So, and I, I, yeah, that's exactly right. I have to focus on developing new releases and all that stuff. So Adepticon's what I plan on doing. Um, if uh, I might do more shows in the future, but yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm getting more help as I get more help sorting inventory and stuff. It'll be way easier. So yeah. looking forward to I think, it. Uh, a lot of folks in the chat have been uh, suggesting things like uh, <laughs> says, curse this talent and popularity. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, as, as you said yourself, you're on that, you're on the cusp there. Uh-huh. And yeah, um, it's super tough. I know um, yeah. for myself, uh, I've had a lot of people say, hey, Dave, when are you going to have a booth at, at Adepticon or a booth at Nova or a booth at wherever? Uh, with my books and it's like well i'm actually gonna i'm gonna take this other route which is work with somebody else who has a booth and can i can put the books in the side of uh, thankfully working with kit and uh and derek at game envy and then i can also line up book signings with them yeah which brings people to their booth which they're happy about and everybody wins so Mm -hmm. i think that's a that's another thing that um as you as you said before like right at the start when you're talking about um your art being collaborative with everybody with each person who um interacts with it uh it's it's a, it's something else that the internet has allowed us to do is be collaborative yeah. or, or think collaboratively first mm-hmm. rather than i have to it's just me i'm just i'm yeah the only and one uh, our i mean the truth is our industry is really small and like yeah, we can, and is. we can also <laughs> rely on each other a little bit you know because yeah. we're we are we're friends <laughs> like you know i i think it's very true that we we are a small group of of people that all are in like this really funny niche within a niche and and so you can find great ways to collaborate with people like i, I partner with black site studio and stuff um yeah yeah it's great no it's definitely a great opportunity uh but we're gonna move on a little oh sorry just before we do move on though i uh, Scott says, I suspect you owe at least half of your success to the mustache. Oh, I don't know. I probably I hope, 60. I hope it's not half. I hope it's, <laughs> yeah. I should, because who knows? I couldn't, it might not last forever. Nothing lasts forever. No. <laughs> sure. Memento Mori. Well, maybe, that's maybe that's nice. uh, the success up to this point, And then uh-huh. beyond, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. everything. Uh, it's, it's all relic laid all the way. Mm-hmm. But, uh, fantastic. Um, Oh, sorry, and just quickly, uh, Patrick says, his, leaving Adepticon, his wallet was lighter and his carry-on bag became a checked bag real quick. Yeah, yeah. I ended up having to check. I had the boxes I shipped inventory in. I just brought one of them to the airport that had all the new toys I bought. And I it shipped it as a checked bag. So. Nice, nice. Uh, that's awesome. Um, I think uh, the next thing that I want to uh, chat, first chat with you about is uh sludge yes yeah um, yeah i, I ask I, away i can i could just launch into telling you guys what it is but yeah let's let's do that because that looks awesome okay so um relic blade is the main game i make it's a like fun fantasy kind of light-hearted adventure battle game where you're playing like a party of adventurers against another party of adventurers um campaign play like very dynamic and fun and this game is a more like larger army scale it's called sludge it's um kind of a dark fantasy doomed black powder setting and so you I want those tanks you those tanks are awesome yeah really great stuff those those are black site studio sculpts 
um, and they're available for um, download and to 3D print. What what but, scale um, is this? <laughs> twenty eight, but like historical twenty eight, so non heroic. Uh, so so those troops are three figures to four figures on a forty millimeter round base. So it kind of it plays more like a skirmishy black powder historical game. Um, it, you know, I wrote that game during the pandemic, and it's it's a lot darker. It's a dark fantasy reflection on war and violence and scarcity and things like that. And um, it's also it's a kit bashing game. So I I have two armies that I've totally sculpted and are available to uh, download and three D print. I have resin casts of one of the armies available on my website. And I have um, conversion bits for use with like Perry miniature scale plastic kits. So those are like the avenues to like build armies for this game. But yeah, it's it has the same like alternating activation, highly tactical gameplay that uh, you would expect from a Sean Sutter game where each activation you don't spend a ton of time on your turn and the game state changes significantly so you end up uh playing more of like on, boots on the ground tactical look at things rather than a higher level strategy where you like i wanted to uh on like a game design level place you in the mindset of an officer so relic blade you're like the hero himself in a way and as the hero, you're swinging swords and quickly reacting and blocking strikes and having fun that way. This game is more like you're an officer. You're trying to keep your troops organized and in fighting shape. Uh, there's a little bit of command and control, um, but you aren't a general or like high command. So you're never like, you're not the one in charge of where you're fighting and why. You're the one trying to react to the combat situation. You are a and, sad, yeah. you are a sad battalion lieutenant command, lieutenant colonel. Who's Precisely, like, yeah. So and that's part of the your... dark, part of the dark setting is in, is letting people be in that position and think about how like I mean soldiers have to soldier. Yeah. Um, and so that's part of the setting. Uh, one of the core mechanics for the game is uh, called gore. And it is the psychology mechanic where when you take damage, you place a gore token next to the guy who took a hit. And then if they removed from play or, or whatever, that's possible after they take a wound. Um, but the gore remains in play. And so that stacks up and ends up being the target number for any morale tests that you have to take. So certain parts of the battlefield where a lot of guys have died will be just absolutely saturated with gore tokens and it'll make it really really difficult to keep your troops under control where the violence has happened and so your command and control is like trying to succeed at command tests or or nerve tests is what they're called to to keep the gore under control and remove it from the table but it adds like a another layer of your tactical play where you are planning which gore you're going to remove to try and make the psycho psychological situation harder for your opponent and beneficial for your troops. And I like how this is. I like how this is somewhere between like a World War One skirmish game, mm -hmm. Call of Cthulhu, and like and like how like historical. Like it, yeah, it, yeah, it's it, awesome. Like it. Damn you, Sean. Now I have to get into this fucking game. Like oh. <laughs> I mean, like I I really regard it as a fantasy setting in a lot of ways. Um, it doesn't reflect our world but technologically it's somewhere in the like it's just pre-modern so there isn't there aren't really mechanized things although they're tanks the they're they run on magic and so the the setting is that um people abused harvesting the like the magic uh roots are really like the core wood of the world tree that the planet is made out of and then when they took too much the the tree died and so they're just like hanging in the roots and branches of this like decaying world and they still love magic and so the lords even in a dying world are still harvesting more and more and killing more and more people and as part of it if, if only it was more of a fantasy setting and not some kind of like gross black mirror but 
Yeah. Uh, that's sort of what we got. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my game. My horror game yep. is, <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm definitely interested in writing more stuff that explores stuff. But I always am thinking about uh, how game mechanics put you in a certain position. Yeah. As as like, uh, am I the strategist making decisions at a at a high level, or am I like in the moment making decisions and having the game mechanics match that? So Sludge is definitely like an officer making the best of a bad situation. You, you got some great feedback. Uh, Scott says, uh, Sean, before you consider shaving, think of Tom Selleck's career. Now mm. think of it when he didn't have the mustache. Maybe pin a picture of Thomas Magnum to your bathroom mirror. I find that that really helps me. Okay. He's not wrong. <laughs> I mean. I was going uh, to say um, that uh, I it was very, very interesting listening to that description of it. Um, because Sludge is a game that really speaks to me. And I'm questioning my choice, my life choices. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's I do that that dark uh, and despairing kind of uh, feeling yeah. that's sitting. It's fun, and it, you know, like it, this photo that you have, I think, really captures that. It's quite cool. It's quite like a spectacle to see the way the armies are laid out, yeah. um, and so it looks cool on the battlefield. And then also, as you play mechanically. Um, the table develops the way it looks. So if you're like a visual storyteller, yeah. visual person like me, because of the gore tokens, you can see where the conflict happens. Whereas, you know, in some games, as you're removing pieces, like suddenly it becomes pristine and then you just have a beautiful little green field, like nothing yeah. happened there. Whereas so after a game of sludge, you're like, this is messed up. There's so much blood everywhere. <laughs> like you've got a couple troops huddling in a corner, but you know you don't forget what happened over on the. So Sean, I, I have a question for you. So looking looking mm -hmm. at this photo, mm -hmm. the guys that that we're seeing the perspective of, so like all mm -hmm. these dudes in front of us in the tanks, yeah. is that a whole army or is this just like a piece of the battlefield? That's pretty close to the size of a full army. So yeah. how many like how many points is that? Uh, uh a standard game's around three hundred points, so that's probably around a, a three hundred point list i could try and do the math but um but that's you said i this think is having two game. tanks is probably pushing pushing close to three like what, what you can see is probably pretty close to 300 points okay uh -huh. so it's it's so it's a war game but it's not it's not oh, a, if, it's not a mass if you, battle war if game. you play skirmish games it's a mass battle game if you play mass battle games it's a skirmish game <laughs> <laughs> for I mean, sure it's I like saga it's, scale it, maybe yeah it's, it's definitely so. more than skirmish like i tell people all the time skirmish is usually eight to eight to 12 or 15 models anything yeah. more than that you're not really playing skirmish anymore mm -hmm. so this is over but not yeah. by much like this no, looks and like if it. you're if you're playing if you're used if you're coming from like playing black powder then yeah. this is more like a skirmish game okay. yeah. um, and then you know as far as it's a really fun opportunity to do like armor paint or, or army painting because it's such a grim setting you can like kind of fudge the paint jobs and do lots of dry brushing yeah, this, this seems very blanchitsu friendly yeah. like this yeah. is where you can really like do crazy bases and make your guys like kind of covered in gore and looking really like i mean it looks nice and washes. it looks great when you paint peri miniatures well um yeah i because i did the i wrote this game as part of blaster which was or is a game anthology um and at the time uh i was doing we were doing multiple versions and so i wrote the core rules for this for over you know a three month period as a secondary project. And as part of that, I like painted four armies and did photography for the book. So like I, it was a kind of a big hobby project to just like take on. Um, so th that was necessarily the like cool dry brush, you know, Blanchetsu sort of like quick, dark, grim, dark setting painting worked out. It's, it's yeah. super cool. Again, it look it looks great. Like I'm, I'm really mad because now I'm going to have to get into this. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's very fun. There are two books for it. There's the Sludge Core Rules, Sludge War, and then Sludge Nations has uh, four four factions. So, like specialized special troops that you can get by aligning with a certain um, style of army. And it's re they're called factions, but they're really more like army, navy like irregular troops and like a highly traditional uh, martial tradition army so right. stylized troops yeah nice mm -hmm. i love it um 
I love that for this to be able to create an army that has that or create an army that had a uniform. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and maybe it's they haven't made they haven't been able to maintain that uniform. Mm-hmm. Everything it, it's in that that state of like active decay. Yeah, so. yeah, being in the field for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I remember reading because I did a lot of research when I was uh, working on this, and uh, part of it was actually because the setting is in these like hanging land masses that are hanging in like the branches of a decaying tree. Uh, it's a little bit like islands, of course, yeah. these battle plains, and so I I read a bunch of books about. Um, the Pacific theater in world war two okay. and, like, and the Marines that fought there. Um, and yeah, part of that in the research was like talking about how people don't really know what color the Marine uniforms actually were because right. they would get discolored immediately. So quickly. Yeah. So like it, the conditions were so harsh that like, there was no regularity to the Marine Corps uniform. <laughs> no, I think that's a, a perfect uh, look at it. Uh, and I, I also grabbed uh, this image. Yes, yeah. So I did, I did a bunch of sculpts and uh, are av- that are available as three D printable models. Uh, they're mostly like one part figures. Uh, I think there's a lot of room for you know modular figures out there, but I also personally I like it just. That's such a cool thing about 3D printing that you can just print a character and not assemble it. So a lot of my figures for Sledge are just like one piece figures. You pop off the supports. Um, yeah. So that that's a sorcerer and a bodyguard in heavy enchanted armor. So there's, there's quite a few uh, fantastical elements. But it's like black magic. It's like nasty sorcery. It's pretty... Right. It's not... Um, not just like fun fireballs. It's like there's psychological no warfare. There's no Glinda the Good Witch. No. no. <laughs> um, something uh, Jez said, there's a, a great line there, the tide line of butchery, going back to that uh, the gore token mm. uh, suggestion. And Josh Gifford said, it's great to hear about Sludge. I haven't checked it out. And it's pretty sick. Yeah, so you can get you can get the PDFs on my website and on DriveThruRPG, you can get a collected a collected version printed together. And um, hopefully, my plan is to write a third part and then self-publish a nice, like, collected sludge core book. Oh, awesome. but, but, like, yeah. you know, my, it's my second game, but yeah. also I've got, like, other things. So managing, it, it's I'm spread pretty thin, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, someone else in the chat was talking about a game um, I worked on called Cretaceous Commandos. It's a okay. commando game where you play as a dinosaur mutant sort of like Ninja Turtle Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> and like, I wrote the rules. I sculpted, I sculpted all the models and like, bro, I don't have time to finish. <laughs> I, like, <I'm> so, <laughs> so like, I, I need to, there's so many fun ideas in me, but you just gotta do what you can. As, as things continue to grow and uh, as Metal King Studio grows. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can hire someone to do the last steps. There'll be opportunities for that in the future. No, that's cool. Uh, and Spec says we need a bigger house to store it all. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, excellent. Um, next up, I told you we'd come back to uh, Malev. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you also do a podcast. Yes. Relic yeah. Cards. It's it's kind of like I mean it's pretty casual. <laughs> like uh, it's mostly Malev and I because we just like we will talk for a long time hanging out and uh and so it's a little bit like a newsletter where for people who don't like to read sure and so yeah that's that's what we do every once in a while we'll like pop in and talk about what we've been working on and make announcements about stuff and that's actually like that's where i made the most comments about cretaceous commandos is in relic buds Um, (laughs) but now people know about the idea and they're like two years later sean why haven't you released that and it's like well i have to keep making relic blade i have to keep making sludge i'm trying (laughs) (laughs) yeah fantastic so uh i think 
so this is on your uh your youtube channel i've put a link yeah. to the youtube channel in the notes below. yeah and it's through all it's all through the but, usual podcast things too so you can get it on spotify and apple and all that um it's good stuff uh we haven't recorded an episode for a while so malev if you're listening we'll figure yeah. it out <laughs> Got, gotta get us both booked you know when we both have time to sit down yep no that's great definitely cool uh next up one of the things yeah, i saw this when i was going through uh yes. metal king studio and i i loved it so hard um this is so the the art art v artist uh, the mm -hmm. top posts of 2023 kind of thing but yeah you know this is sort of like an act of rebellion while also participating because there's sure. there's this weird thing where we live in this age of social media uh, which i'm sure is a big surprise to you guys uh, <gasps> like no one knew but uh <laughs> but it puts a weird pressure on us as creators where like they'll show us our most successful post and it's like bro you're not going to tell me what the most valuable thing i did this year was yep. like they because what they are saying is here are the things here's the content you made for free for us that we made the most money on right you know like that's so stupid so i i wanted to like reflect on my year think about what happened and it was kind of a tough year for me because i normally try to do a kickstarter every year but right between fulfilling all of my duties i didn't finish the kickstarter and run it until this year um so i was trying to take time to think about all of the stuff i did achieve and like that's where i put the thought into like um you know like in the bottom left corner i said that shipping is one of the things i did and i have to like really take the time to deliberately honor that effort because as an artist making the art is very fun right yeah um and a sketch in my sketchbook is is valuable in its own right and it as something i don't share but i'm trying to share stuff and i'm and nothing i made is being shared unless i'm taking doing that daily work of shipping the orders and so even yeah. though it took up more of my time than i wish it did i can think of it as part of the art making process my commitment to like actually get my art into people's hands so like there's a lot of sort of like philosophical thoughts like um the paper minis in the top right like yep. that to me is a really important accessibility option because our hobby is really expensive um but i created paper standees of like all the relic blade characters and it's an important step for me to feel like i'm creating art that people can access you know yep. so even though i felt disappointed that i didn't finish my new game and my new kickstarter in time to do it in 2023 calendar year um i also just like decided instagram can't tell me what i did that was valuable and <laughs> that i'll i'll tell you guys like what i'm most proud of you know so yeah. like the bottom right is a, a reprint of the rule book like that's a huge expense to me to yeah. re to, to suddenly print a book again yeah but it's the truth is like rel without a core rule book my game just doesn't exist so it's like well sean spend $15,000 today or no longer exist, you know? And that's a tough yeah. thing for someone to just choose to do, so, you know, just taking the time to honor it. Be like, yeah. one of the things I did is just stayed alive. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> no, I thought, um, I thought this was great. I, I completely took it as, as that it's, it's you mm -hmm. celebrating each of those things that was tough. That was fun. That was part mm -hmm. of that complete, sort of circle through there um and i think you did a great job really capturing how psyched you are when you're shipping like, <laughs> yeah. it really comes it really comes across yeah. you can see my old boston terrier in the little corner of it yeah. too. he's yeah. a black and white dog so that's great no fantastic um so yeah i i think um i know that for, i i did one of these things as well of course i mm -hmm. i can't draw so that i i didn't uh it but i i did grab the things that i felt that i accomplished through the year yeah yeah um, so yeah i think that's a way better a healthier way to approach um the idea of a top nine or a spotify wrapped it's like no i get to choose what i like about myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. it's probably it's probably a good idea I, I i have a much different way of looking at it like coming from you know 20 plus years working in fortune 500 like mm -hmm. corporate America, I have a much different take on things, which is 
I, and, I, and I've told bosses this before. I'm like, I'm not that guy who's looking for a pat on the back. Like, yeah. I expect to not hear from my boss unless something is brand new or I have screwed up. And then, and that's fine. But like, other than that, like, I don't, I don't need to hear you or see you. Like, I don't need a, I don't need an attaboy. It's like, I know I'm doing a good job. That's not why I do this. Um, so for me, my take on business is like, whenever I get to step away, I'm pretty good at compartmentalizing and going, okay, I'm not doing that now. I'm spending yeah. time with, you know, my wife or my friends or doing this with Dave or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, I, I think I just like parse it out differently. Oh yeah. Um, That's a way healthier. My work is just so personal that like it's tough for me to separate like my own value from my own productivity from my own like success as a art maker and then and then there's like this major conflict between like being good at social media versus being good at making the thing you actually intended to make and so i have to like deliberately choose to not be a, an influencer but rather be someone who's making stuff and I appreciate that. I, Dave and I've talked this before. I, I hate that word. I hate <laughs> it. Like I, influencer I, or content creator. Yes. Both are influencer. So, so yeah. I, yeah. I think that there's a very, very big difference. And mm-hmm. and Dave and I went into this very, very intentionally, mm-hmm. which is we we try to be really positive and we want to have guests on that we like their stuff and we want to talk about it and mm-hmm. kind of put that out there there are things that I don't like. And every, and so every once in a while I will go on like a bit of a rant or a tear, but <laughs> I, I would much prefer to spend our time and our effort talking about stuff that we like. It just doesn't yeah. make any sense to talk about yep. stuff that you don't like. And nice. I, I think when it comes to influencers versus content creators, influencers have become kind of like this sort of like false profit mouthpiece that exists across all industries mm-hmm. where it's people who are either being paid or are looking to be paid to offer up their take yeah. that brings them likes or follows or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, it like, it's just kind of weird. And I, I just, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah. Whereas content creators are like, Hey, I'm excited about whatever. So I'm going to talk about this thing or I'm going to, or in your case, I'm going to make this thing and yeah. you're providing something that you're putting out in the universe. I, and I think mm-hmm. that's a much more positive thing than being an influencer an influencer is just somebody who wants to get clicks and likes and it's like oh hey look over there oh hey look over there whereas you're like hey here's this thing that i like yeah and and whether it's yours or not yours like you're spending time being like i'm gonna draw attention to this thing because i like it Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah i think it's funny how how much like philosophy comes into everything we're doing especially in the changing landscape of like what is work in the 21st century, you know, like, yeah. um, cause it's very cool. I've, I'm super grateful for what I do and things could change. And, um, and the, like the word influencer, the word content, like it's all like from this weird perspective that is, um, not really like people, like a friend of mine, uh, was doing some consulting work for a company and they were talking about micro influencers. Like that's, that's called people. Yeah. <laughs> These are people. Someone, one person who says one thing to one other person isn't a micro influencer. They're just, <laughs> that's just a person. Like it's so frustrating. So, you yeah. know, we, we live in a funny time and which all makes it all the more important for us as individuals to like think deeply about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So like, that's part of me thinking about myself as an artist who's creating like a 80% done adventure that yeah. you're gonna that you're gonna join me on and that's why i like doing it instead of thinking like what will someone buy like what miniature can i sculpt that someone will buy from me like that's not how I, that's not how i operate but some people you know some people get value out of doing that kind of work too so yeah I'm I, I'm just, them. I just have to figure out my own meaning i'm just i'm just hoping that at some point in the next like five ten years this mm-hmm. all gets sorted out to the point that like it's less about what the algorithm wants yeah, and more about like how do, how do, how do people that have similar interests do the things that Find they like? Other. Yeah. Cause we without, were just without, celebrating how great yeah. it is that like uh, with the internet, we can find the stuff we really like. And so maybe, maybe AI will help me just see the guys that I really want to see their art. Uh, again, you know? I think technology is the technology, particularly social technology is a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. I think that it has, it creates a bunch of really cool things. Mm-hmm. Like I, I am, I'm appreciative 
that I can talk to, you know, friends of mine that are on the other side of the world or like, you know, guys that are in Japan right now, or like my business partner, Adam is in the far East. So I like that we can stay in contact. Like Jeff Brooks, who we've talked about a bunch of times, like Jeff is in Malaysia right now. So mm -hmm. the fact that he can like see this and check this out and we can share stuff mm -hmm. and talk about what we like, like, that's really cool. Yeah. The problem is the, the business algorithm that wants yeah. to go, Oh, <laughs> Well, Dave yeah. clicked on this <laughs> random thing on his Facebook, so obviously he wants this ad about socks. Yeah, where they like, where they're turning us into like, a product. It's sort yeah, of, and you're like, I don't want to. That's not grumpy. what I want to do. Like, stop, <laughs> stop pushing products to me. That's not. But what also, I want. sometimes I'm on Instagram and I like. Yeah, I think it's interesting because like we were teasing about influencers, but uh, you know, I scroll through people's Instagram stories and then find out about a cool T-shirt from an artist I haven't seen before. And then yeah. suddenly I'm buying that and I feel really good about that. Um, yeah. So anyways, it's, it's fun. I love, I love being an artist and uh, I love supporting other artists. So. Yeah. I think it's all about making conscious decisions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. And I, I was just as deep thinking when I was working for corporations, like I, I worked for United airlines before I was work, doing an art full time. It was when I was in art school, I was doing it. And like, I had the same sort of approach where I was like, well, they hate me. My, like my employer hates me and treats me bad and I don't have enough money to eat, but like I'm helping people get to weddings and funerals and helping people get travel to things that will be good. And so I always like made my mindset feel like I was doing something more noble than I really was. So it's right. the same now. <laughs> That's how I get by. Excellent. Um, I, I threw this picture in here because, uh, I, I love that it, even mm. your your boxes full of minis in yeah. uh, in in boxes or in in packets. I realized that <laughs> I can understand pictures faster than read words. That's right. that, this is this is genius. Like this is absolutely genius. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So and the, there's like silly things like unsorted models. They don't have all their gear on. So like. Right. Like I, I don't know if you can see, there's like an unsorted oh, yeah. guy all the way to the right, and his he's not holding his weapons, and then a guy all the way or all the way to the left, he's not holding his weapons, and all the way to the right, he has his sword and shield in his hands. It's the right. difference is that those <laughs> models are already sorted. So good, oh, that's fantastic. I'm a goofy guy. I love it. Uh, absolutely love it. But uh, very cool. Next up, uh, so yeah, let's um, have a quick chat about uh the new game yes new yeah play. yeah so it's it's a new game i may i wrote a so my latest kickstarter which has has ended now is for a two new factions for relic blade which is very fun um and because like Relic Blade, each new character adds like new options and new exciting stuff. They come with upgrades that can be used on old characters. So it, it like revitalizes the whole sort of, I mean, I'd say meta, but like your own collection is the meta. Sure. Um, <laughs> so, so it revitalizes things. And so I've got like two new factions. There's these ones that are on the screen now. They're like some elven champions who use magic and technology to like augment themselves. Cause like in, in ancient times, the elves were able to guided through these like ritual rites of passage in order to perfect themselves. But the elders all died in the apocalypse of relic blade called the sundering. And so there's like this orphaned race that are like perpetually stuck in a state of immaturity. And part of why it was so important for them to go through those rituals is because they're very, very susceptible to magic. And so um, their environment that has like, we'll say like magical pollution, they can get corrupted very easily. So they have to be really careful. Um, part of that is that they've formed these guilds that each guild is exploring different avenues to create new ways of maturing themselves. So these three champions represent three different avenues that they're working toward it. So there's a, an artificer who's using technology, a, a star site, the archer in the foreground is using like astrology. And then the uh, all the way to the right is the talisman. And he uses uh, magic symbols to obfuscate his identity so that magic will trust him. Right. So, because normally magic on, will choose a vessel and use them, or just like 
abuse someone. And so he uses these like ancient symbols and various types of cursed items in order to trick magic into allying with him. And then in the background, there's a storm heron, which is like sort of a meta commentary on the idea of being sensitive to magic in that these herons are, are like not a species, different species, but rather have been uh, adapted to a world that has too much magic in it. And so it's a storm heron because the um, primordial source of the storm has like chosen them so they can like cast lightning spells and stuff. Right. So that's those guys. And then uh, there's another set that are like uh, uh, mercenary pirates adventurers. So you've got like high seas adventurers uh, inspired by like Southeast Asian cultures and aesthetics without being like disrespectful, but like trying to add diversity in a, in a fun way. So we've got some fun adventures. Uh, and then alongside those, we've got a new a all new game that I wrote called Curse Breaker that uses Relic Blade miniatures and it plays on a two by two board just like Relic Blade uses the same terrain, but it's a totally new game system. And speaking of where I was talking about earlier with Sludge, how I wanted you to feel like an officer, whereas in Relic Blade, I want you to feel like the knight who is swinging the sword. In this game, I want you to be feel like a magician or a wizard and so when you enter a battlefield situation you're in like bullet time uh slows down you can like predict to the end of the round and so the game mechanics are designed to make you feel like you can really um harness your options and lay the perfect traps and plants so even though <laughs> it's not it's not an overly complicated game it's easy to learn there's fun magic system uh, with a cool dice mechanic where you roll your dice at the beginning of the round and each die result represents a different spell. And then you spend those dice to just perform the action that they represent. So like uh, imagine you have five dice, three of them in necromancy, two of them in fire. Um, the two in fire might result in fire spells, the necromancy spells, you might summon a skeleton or cast a curse. And then, uh, so then you'll roll those dice, you have your results for the turn and you get a play. So it's very, um, a little more strategic, less tactical in that you're able to plan ahead and be very, okay. like a very clever wizard. <clears throat> so, uh, the idea is that hopefully you'll be sitting there and you'll think, I'm so clever, man, I feel so smart and fun and intelligent. Whereas in Relic Blade, I want you to think, oh my gosh, I'm like really good at adventure. I can jump over this thing and swing my sword really good. So that's sort of the idea. Yeah, I think great, uh, when we, when we spoke at, uh, at Nepticon, you you said um, that yeah, you want Curse Breaker to feel like you're a wizard. Yes, Relic Blade feel like you're that swashbuckling mm -hmm. adventurer. Yeah, yeah, uh, and dial in. But essentially, they're 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 existing in the same universe. They're using yep. the same models, but it's a, yes. it's just another approach. Just going back to that conversation before, you were saying you you like to think about where people are sort of on yeah. the scale of the panel where they yeah and in. then another, another concept i've talked about in the past is trying to have your miniature collection be like the nintendo and then the rules be the little cartridge you plug into it so okay you should have a at this point i expect everyone to have a collection of relic blade figures and then when you play relic blade there are various formats so you can play a like cool pickup game or you can play a narrative campaign that is more story driven or you can play a uh, card-driven cooperative campaign. You know, I've got different books that do those different things. And now with yeah. this, you use that same set of miniatures uh, to play a new dice-driven wizard battle game. And I think this style or the, the gameplay of Curse Breaker may not appeal to everyone, but I think it appeals to a, a different subset that like if you couldn't get your wife to want to play a hack and slash adventure she may be way more engaged in the idea of rolling these dice and spending these actions to cl be clever and be smarter than you because we all know our wives are smarter than us and so a game that like reinforces that definitely is a fun option yeah no super cool um also the the other photos i put in here are Again, showing yes, up more that's artwork of those elves. Uh, yeah. So Josh wanted to know, like, it sounds to me like you can use some of the same minis, 
but it's a different mm, yes. game. Josh wants yeah. to know if they're like War Machine and Hordes and you can play them together. No. It's more it's like different rule sets. Same minis, yeah. same minis, different rule set. Yeah, I've I've thought about it quite a bit. I guess you could say it's like Age of Sigmar and Warcry because they actually you actually use the same physical miniatures, but those games are principally the same. You you move and attack. Like yeah. okay. Right on. Uh, this is a totally different play experience where like people who are more into board games might really jam with C curse breaker and not be as excited about the like uh you know rpg tactics rpg that is relic blade so um i think that's yeah i've i've struggled figuring it out it's like is it like mario and mario kart I don't know. Is it like, <laughs> but you know, you, you really use the same miniatures, and each player controls one magician, and then there's whatever spells you have. You can summon summon fire elementals or skeletons or whatever. So uh, when you're customizing your character before each game, you choose which which lores of magic you'll bring, and then you so you could be like a fire necromancer, like I said before, or an ocean storm mountain character, and like be doing storm mountain magic so lots of <laughs> options excellent mm -hmm. no, that's very cool uh so uh, as i said um the kickstarter has wrapped up yes uh what is uh what are the options for folks uh who are interested in uh jumping in if they haven't yeah, so the new releases will be available like pretty much the minute I have them available. So as soon as I ship the Kickstarter, you can get them on relicblade.com. Uh, the best way to get into Relic Blade is that two-player box set, like in that image you had that was of my workshop with the boxes. Um, there's a two-player box set. Uh, yeah, that one, the Storms of Kura. Uh, it is... Oh. No, uh, two player go. set it's the best way to get into relic blade and those figures would be perfect for curse breaker also um cool. so you'd be set up for both games that way and then just be able to pick up the rule book when it comes out but yeah i mean i work hard to keep everything on in stock on my website and um and so stuff that's out of stock right now will be in stock soon um i'm continuing to support the range and grow it um continuously yeah awesome. so that's probably the best way yeah and you aren't really missing out of on like exclusives or anything i really try to make my um games as accessible as possible so i try to avoid exclusives no fantastic so in the as I mentioned before in the notes below we've got a link to um relicblade.com uh, and also to the metal king studio youtube channel uh, i think i might have thrown in uh sean sutter art instagram as well Oh yeah, so, you can check that out. I'm yeah. I'm trying to be less invested in social media and more just in being my own thing. But yeah. um but yeah, so Sean Sutter Art on Instagram is where I'm pretty active. There's like a good Discord for Relic Blade. You can get a lot of fun activity there and the Facebook group um, and my website of course relicblade.com you can get in on the newsletter. That's a I'm trying to focus on more direct contact instead of trying to play the social media game. Sure. So. Sean, your your background is like a dolly painting. There's like a mirror. Yeah, on your left sorry, shoulder. it's confusing. Oh, nice. Okay, oh, nice. Yeah. I was like, what the? That is a portal to uh, alternate. And there's my wife. Oh. Hi. <laughs> awesome. No, you're you're absolutely right. I was I was like, what's going? What oh, is going on? There's all sorts of weird. Yeah. But, and, and Unreal anyway. perspective. That's great. Awesome. Um. So. Sean, as I mentioned before, uh, we've come to the part of the show where uh, we take a look at uh, minis painted by the community. Good. So um, if you're up And you want me to be like really mean, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like, my we're main come thing. Down hard. My main we're thing is mean spirited. Uh, you yeah. ask anyone. Yeah, land on them. Land on them with both feet. That's yeah. the that's the plan. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes, be authentic. Is is the uh, is the approach we take. But uh, here we go. Uh, so, as mentioned, yep, everybody, this is uh, these are photos from our uh, Facebook group, uh, Build, Paint, Play community. Uh, if you are not a member, uh, head over there, click the join button, and somebody will let you in. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, 
invite you to post your uh, minis that you're working on, work in progress shots, uh, photos from games, all sorts of things. Uh, and first up, we've got Adam Weller. So over the last few uh, months, Adam's been painting a lot of busts and a lot of larger, like 75 mil, 90 mil figures. Uh, and this is him going back to paint, painting some 32 mil scale. And this, uh, this orc, this orc is great. His yeah. his skin tone is amazing. I I love that he has blonde hair and a blonde beard. Yeah, <laughs> giving War, Warcraft three vibes. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I've I've always loved a good beard on an orc. Yep, it's uh it's absolutely fantastic. I love the um the variety of textures as well that uh, that Adam's been able to get sort of across, or you know, from there across the. Yeah, uh, I love that. This is not amateur painting. I don't think I can be mean. I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> I'm sure Adam would be okay with that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it does look um, does look fantastic. Well, he's great. And again, his, it. his uh, it's not a skill that I do, but his non-metallic metallic is great. Like the spear mm. looks awesome and the rust effects and the tips of his boots and his bracelet and the gun. Like yeah. it's, he, 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 you're absolutely right, Dave. He does such a great job with his textures. Like, his pants, like the wood, the scratched up panel on the side of the pistol looks really, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just a great, a great bit of texture there. Um, Do you know yeah. if this is like, I'm getting distracted by the sculpt a little bit. Like, is it scratch? Yeah. Is it converted or is this? A, the uh, it's from another, from a third party uh, okay. sort of, uh, indie sculptor. Um, cool. I, I know that he mentioned it in the, in the post, but I can't remember the name. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember where he, he printed it, but um, yeah. yeah, but he's he's it's a really really cool model. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next up, we've got a photo from Bing. Uh, Bing's been working on uh, after the announcement of Steam Forged, um, bring back Guild Ball. Uh, he's been working on his Miners Guild, uh, and these are his uh, six starting models. This is super cool. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love that you have the giant like drill tank thing yep. <laughs> and then like a couple of miners mm -hmm. and then there's like the weird servo miner in the background and then <laughs> there's like a there's like a, a woodchuck or something that's like it, it must be a mole like at the mascot yeah, mole. Mole. yeah. <laughs> so cool and he has yeah. like his he has his goggles yeah i love, I love the weathering on the on the like drill tank thing yeah uh, the it's metals really and like the dustiness look really good in the and i, I i'm sucker for that um like construction site yellow too it's yep. really well done it's definitely uh it's it's such a cool color to to work with on that weathering mm -hmm. sort of front you can yeah. take it in a couple of different directions but yeah excellent work really there being cool. very very nice. nice uh next up we have uh cal uh, cal's just mentioned in the chat that he's posted some of his most recent works uh but this is one that i was able to snag before the show uh, is a cool obelisk. Yeah, nice work, Cal. Yep. Yeah, the cool, cool terrain. Cool mm -hmm. terrain is one of those things. It, it always makes the game just better. It's it's yeah. just like ninety percent of the time. I'm like, I don't want to paint terrain. <laughs> I have so much stuff to paint. I don't want to paint. It's funny because like I, I, you never regret it because like you, no, no, no. You use it in so many games. It's like the one miniature you can paint and you'll use every time. But I still drag my feet about it too. Yeah, yeah I think I it's one of those things as well with um. With when you're playing a mass battle game, the the spectacle is the army, and the yeah. terrain can sort of fade into the background. You don't have to put as much mm -hmm. effort into it. But as you get become as the games become smaller and smaller, the terrain becomes much more of an yeah. important. Part. And you can do so much more when it's like one or two adventurers jumping and playing. Like in Relic Blade, uh, the terrain is very interactive because guys there are rules for jumping and climbing and falling and pushing guys around and and running and jumping. And whereas you know in Warhammer, when I back when I played, uh, yeah. the terrain was just sort of like a dead space on the board where you couldn't march. You move around. You know, yeah. yeah, you just had to move around it. So making investing a bunch of time in a dead part of the board isn't quite as exciting but this it, i mean this looks yeah. like a great objective piece you know yeah 100%. Using it it, a lot of games. You know, all, all i'm imagining is that it's some sort of like magical mailbox because there's mm -hmm. the slot at the bottom you like, <laughs> like, you like, you like you like drop your mail in there and it, it appears somewhere else you're like i gotta mail this that'd be fantastic 
but yeah, um, that's just that could be a relic probably. blade scenario coming up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Josh has just said uh, tornado sirens here. No alerts on phone though. I may okay. be off the Oz tonight. Stay safe, uh, Josh. Uh, if you're able to take your phone into the basement, uh, or if you maybe even down in the basement already, uh, stay safe. Yeah, be safe. Uh, next up, Ooh. you might recognize these models, Sean. Ooh, yeah, I sculpted those. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I've seen these paint jobs on the Relic Blade Discord and uh, and on Instagram because I remember that Amanita. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Chris uh, always does uh, fantastic work. And when I saw him post these, I was like, mm "Hmm, fantastic." <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was all I, it, I all I could uh, do to to not mention it when you you said fire elemental. Yes. Earlier. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, these are these are love great. It. Chris always does a great job with like his like oversaturated colors, and then like he'll our super he'll do he'll do saturated colors, and then he uses like a big pop of something yeah. to kind of like ground it. So yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. I love the uh, the Billman there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. nice basing, and I I love the like striped leggings on the Billman too. Yeah, it's it's fun to see. You know, you, it's easy to kind of forget some of those details but fun stuff to explore i wonder what it looks like on the back because on his back he's got like a loaf of bread and a wheel of cheese right. and all that stuff so, uh, like a bottle of port so all of his supplies mm -hmm. yeah i think chris might have actually posted the photo of the uh the back side so uh if you want to head to the build paint play community page on facebook you better check that out but yeah beautiful work chris uh, Chris also posted some more uh, Mandalorians that he's been working on. Oh, sick. nice! And I wanted to—it's cool to see the style shift from you know to for the more like animated style. And so that's that's Gar Saxon on the right, and Chris painted all the pieces. I don't know if he magnetized them or if he bought two sets, but so Gar Saxon can either have his helmet and the sniper rifle, or he can have a pistol and an energy shield, and he can be bareheaded. Mm. Right, but he posted photos with both, so I don't know. Again, I don't know if he magnetized it or just got two sets. Or man, I really like that. Um, the rocket effects into the smoke really nice yeah. transition. There. A bunch of the Mandalorians have them, it mm -hmm. is super neat. And it's believe it or not, that's actually not a tough thing to achieve. Like, there are so many people who are at the store who are like, Oh, this looks really hard. I'm like, mm -hmm. it, It's not like basically paint the whole thing gray, do all the smoke first, and then you yeah. go back and you do all your, your fire colors. It, it, it looks great, but mm -hmm. um. It's it's such a cool effect. I tell people all the time that the best effects are the easiest tricks. Like, yeah. the, there's a reason why everybody does them. It's because they they look great. But I understand that it's daunting for a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little abstract. Hard. I I did um I had for my men off army for for war machine. Well, protectorate of men off. I I took all the guys that had rockets and drilled uh into the rocket and then had a wire that was like really long and yeah. put a rocket and then like wrapped green stuff around it to make the smoke and then painted it so it has the same kind of effect but it sure is fun on the battlefield when you can see the rockets all just like flying through the <laughs> Hocking so, out. Similar. Sure. The, yeah. the other thing he did on this that i really like is his black on gar saxon has a lot of depth without doing my least favorite thing which is trying to highlight black with white mm. Like nice. it's just lots of like layering and edges and stuff like that. And just like using like successively lighter grays to pull that depth. That's, that's a really cool effect and it's very subtle, but it's, it's, it, that's my favorite effect on that piece. Yeah. That was great. Again, wonderful work, Chris. Uh, next up, <laughs> so Dave has been, uh, Dave Hummel has a, an enormous space Marine collection, mm -hmm. uh, Sean. Uh, and... look like vampire space Marines from here. Yep. Last a lot um, of them. They, they are. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of those. But uh, yeah, last week we saw his first company and um, his dreadnoughts. This is the second company uh, of his Space Marine collection. Um, I actually, I think I actually sent Dave actually placed an order on on uh, for my store. I sent out yeah. a Spike magazine to him. I think the other day. Oh, nice. That's cool. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad you're having uh, a lot of fun with these. Dave, um, so good. I think, uh, yeah, you're enjoying laying out the uh, the collection and taking the photos. But I can't, I can't wait to see him at Adepticon where he brings his entire chapter. Like he, he says yep. he doesn't have a full chapter. He says he has like six enhanced companies, and I'm like, 
pretty close. That's close. Yeah. That's the dream, right? <laughs> just, I mean, just the space marine company is like what we dreamed space about. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. cool. Uh, fantastic. Uh, next up is uh, John Steining. John's been working on uh, a combo sort of fantasy, uh, Warhammer fantasy empire army and uh, also using it as a um, like 15th century Lenschneck mm -hmm. mercenary army. So, Also sponsored by Army Painter. Shout out, Army Painter. Right, yeah, shout out to the, the speed paints there. Uh, but yeah, so of course you can't have an army without a proper uh, sort of fantasy or historical army mm -hmm. without a, um, a wagon train. Yeah. And yeah, that's a fun, that's a fun project. Adds a lot of like immersion to an army. Yeah. Looks great. Definitely cool. Uh, sorry, in the chat, um, Speck has said, I'm painting my first ever set of miniatures, uh, a relic blade, bone and darkness. And it's been slow for me oh, cool. overthinking. Yeah. Overthinking can be tough. You, it's uh, okay. If you, if you mess up, you can just buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way to go uh but yeah everything can be tough um sometimes it's just uh it's good just to paint it get the stuff on there and then you can step back and have another think and yeah sometimes it's it it's not as you haven't gone down a, a terrible path you've gone down a, a reasonable mm -hmm. path I, and I, I i don't necessarily make it super easy for people because there aren't like samples of painted models on on the box or anything right. so like i kind of expect people to like thumb through the cards and get an idea of different color schemes and and play around that way so i don't if, think, I think, I don't if think i've ever painted a model the way it was on the box i don't think i love to do that i love to just i love to just like paint up a two-player set as if it was just straight from the imagination of the creator but like yeah i also i think yeah, checking out some of the community stuff. Don't be afraid. If you're feeling like you're not sure what color schemes to go for, just copy one of our community people. They'll be stoked about it. So the other thing to keep in mind too when you're when you're painting stuff, so you don't like get in your own head, is like done, not perfect. So do you want to get it done or do you want it to be perfect? If you want to get it done, you and any there's no such thing as mistakes. Everything we do is water-based. It's water-based acrylics. So mm -hmm. you can just let it dry and you can paint over it. Or if it's really yeah. bad, you can get some green stuff and soak them and you can scrub the paint off. Like there's mm -hmm. there's a zillion and one ways you can fix any mistakes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like you just just kind of like, you know, let, let your imagination kind of do the walking and be like, I'm going to paint this guy pink and green. Sounds good. Let's paint him pink and green. Yeah. Like there's, there's no wrong answer. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... Something to think about. All good. Anyway, uh, John's doing a great job here. Uh, excited to see that uh, that coach at the back uh, come through. Yeah, that's. Uh, that, I think it's it's really cool to take on a project like that, where you know, because so many of the models we do are oriented toward just like the playable units or whatever. But like I was saying with terrain, that's a great way to have something on the table that adds immersion. And then things like this baggage train. Um, great for scenarios great for immersion like really it's it's like such a wonderful project for gaming and collections yeah definitely so awesome work there john uh next up uh jonathan palomo uh jonathan palomo is a guy that i uh, used to work with back in the day in australia uh at gw jonathan lives in uh ottawa now uh and he was at adepticon and in the 40k uh, championship, he won second, for the second year in a row, won best painted army. So uh, nice. You know, Jeff, Jeff Smith and I got to see these in person and they look, they look great. Like he did a great yeah. job. Like all of his fades on his blues and his yellows look so good. Um, he did a ton of conversion work too. So like the, oh, sweet. the repulsor that's in there is like stepping on an orc that's coming out of a manhole. And then all of his like, all of his Thunderwolf cab, he doesn't like the idea of the Space Wolves riding wolves. So they're all running on bases with giant wolves with them. Oh, yeah, I like that. It's like wolf wolf buddies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everybody loves, uh, you know, Sir Santa of Claws here as like uh, the leader right. of the Space Wolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not. He's oh, that's not a in cool his mini. Play. I, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, fantastic uh, Land Raider there. 
Yeah. But, really uh, nice. Congratulations, Jonathan. Thanks very much for uh, posting these. Yeah. yeah it's exactly a lot right. of work painting an army that size to that standard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's very it's cool. a pretty it's a pretty balanced list too it's not super meta heavy it's not like it's not just like a gross list like it's it's really it's a fun list he's got some terminators and a land raider which immediately took me back it's kind of old school and then he's got like a bunch of infantry and a dreadnought and a little bit of thunderwolf calves like he's got a little bit of everything but it's a it's a it's a fun list yeah that's great nice work jonathan uh okay so i have this josh potter did not paint this uh but josh over the last few weekends so josh was at adepticon um having a lot of fun and uh running a bunch of demo games uh this past weekend josh was at a um an event uh running a paint and take um and i apologize josh i can't remember the name of the event but uh this is he, he's been posting on his social media uh, photos of minis that people have been painting at the paint and take mm -hmm. and this was uh an 11 year old girl posted her uh painted her first mini Dang, uh, that's good it was this and yeah it's definitely uh super cool see uh somebody having obviously having fun and mm -hmm. getting involved in it and wanting to um just really enjoy that that process mm -hmm. so Bring, bringing new people into our hobby is like the best thing like i really enjoy it um mm -hmm. josh was really excited too because he said this this little girl was really excited because she did all the makeup like he said it, he said the photo doesn't do it justice but he gave her mm -hmm. like he did like blush he did her eyes and stuff and mm -hmm. yeah that's great i love i love seeing when people can um like get over that barrier of just wanting to try or feeling intimidated because like there's a lot of brush control going into this paint job considering it's a, a first miniature that's been painted mm -hmm. like that's really good yeah. uh, i mean i don't i don't even paint eyes so yeah and those eyes are both looking in the same direction yeah how cool is that that's, that's yeah cool. that's the key that's the real key yeah but uh awesome thanks very much for sharing that josh and uh for sharing those others uh very cool and keep up the awesome awesome work uh next up josh sawyer uh josh has been painting a lot of uh legion imperialis recently uh and had a lot That's of fun not what this is. playing in the events at uh adepticon and he said uh, i think he said something along the lines of announced for something completely different yeah uh so he's been i think this in. is all the gale force nine aliens is it gale force nine or is it the yeah, the I think I mean, they uh, look honestly. They look like the aliens from the movie Aliens. Yeah, like the. the I don't. But I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is the Protoss aliens or if this is the aliens from the Aliens board game, because you can buy just the warriors by themselves. Someone right. said Protoss. Yeah, I do see. I do yeah. see the, oh, the no, guys, down the yeah, end. Yeah, that's Josh. Josh saying Protoss. Okay. So it's when Protoss had the uh, AVP license. Yeah, dude, Protoss is one of those companies. Like, I mean, they don't exist now. They they changed their name again for like the third time. But they're yeah. they're another one of those games, those companies that I just don't understand. It's like, hey, we we got this huge IP. It's like, what did you guys do with it? They're like, uh, nothing. Yeah. I, like, I remember <laughs> being at Gen Con and coming around a corner, and they had, and I've told Alex has heard this story before. You know the crazy like drop ship that the Colonial Marines use, the Cheyenne drop ship. Mm -hmm. Yep, they had one of those with the missile pods open like all i mean it's it's like this big it's like bigger than a land raider and it was like set up on a corner fully painted it looked gorgeous and i came around the corner was like as a model painter like i was like that's incredible i want that what is this and some kid was like oh it's for the avp game and i was like oh is that new and the guy at the booth goes no we've had it for like six or seven years yep <laughs> and immediately i was like that's problematic and the guy was like what do you mean i was like I work in the minis industry. Like I work in the community and I've never heard of this game. Like I'm an yep. aliens fan and a miniatures <laughs> fan. You make an alien miniatures game that I've never heard of. I was like, what is going That's on? Interesting. I mean, I can relate like it's communicating is not easy, but you think if you were maybe if you're spending all your money trying to have a license. Yeah. I was like, like you're like, this crazy. spread thin. Yeah. But, uh, cool stuff. So that'll be a fun project to like. Yeah, yeah, work it will through. be. And it, it, there's, it, there's some colonial marines in the background. Uh, I can see the colonial marines back there. Yeah. It's such and a so great I image think as well. Some predators too. Yeah. 
But uh, it's such a great image that uh, Josh took there. I love it. <laughs> the best was the, and now for something completely different. Was, <laughs> you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Awesome, and, and like with uh with figures like that in your collection, there are a lot of games you could throw down. Yeah, make good use. Uh, next up, we've got uh Kelly Rowe uh, has been painting some some more MCP. So uh, everyone's favorite bald guy. Uh, yeah, that's really good. I think one of the coolest things in this is the little strips of comic book on the ground. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna point those out too, but like the paint job is really good. It's not just, it the yeah. Paint <laughs> no, no, I mean, like the, the mini, the mini is incredible, but like yeah. that's such a cool nod to have like comic book pages, like on, like, I, like it's just awesome. Like the, uh, Kelly, mm -hmm. Kelly always does a great job. Like the, the work is incredible. Like the, yeah. the professor works looks great. It's got mm -hmm. that construction yellow that you like, Sean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also with the way the the way the papers are glued down, it adds a lot of motion to his like I don't know yeah. psychic blast or whatever his mind control powers he's doing. It's, yeah, they're not just flat; they're lifted up. And yeah, being tossed around. But yeah, beautiful work there, Kelly. Uh, really cool. Next up, we got a couple yes. of photos from Christian Simonson. Uh, been doing some work. Yeah, absolutely brutal for sure. Um, I hate Chaos Space Marines, but I love Christian's work. <laughs> yep. The wonderful uh, Cthonian uh, Reavers. Uh, oh, yeah, that's bad. I like it. Go, can you go back? I love the guy that's just off to the right. He has the weird tube. Like, right. like his Mark Six mask is all messed up. Yeah. It's very like if Gonzo was a space marine. Right. <laughs> Instead when, of your, when your beaks are empty yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he... Yeah. He always did such a great job with his like his use of um, water slide transfers and then weathering them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, good. Again, they're, beautiful work, Christian. They're, they're awesome great. looking. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a little out of the loop. Those are 30k minis, right? Yeah, Sorry, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, technically, you could use them in 40k. They're just they're just sure. either space marines or chaos space marines. But but yeah, those are specifically for Horus Heresy, mm -hmm. so they're 30k. Yeah, yeah they're the, the um, generation of armor. Yeah, they're, they're all wearing from, Mark Six, uh, and the Horus symbol, right? The eye. Yeah, the eye. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the uh, the Sons of Horus have a um, sort of a an organization within the Sons of Horus that have the uh, the black and the black armor, red shoulder pads, rather than just the uh, sort of the seafoam green. Yeah, the just Aaron. Yep. So um, looking great. Yeah, they're so. Cool. Uh, next up. Uh, Luis is working on uh, Tor Garadon from the Imperial Fists, and uh, it's his base that he's been putting together. Cool. So the, the two pieces of concrete at the front are from the Tor Garadon base, the plastic base, uh, and then he's had some fun with uh, some cork and some uh, twisted wire for rebar. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's so, so, so cool. I mean, Luis is a is a is a scale modeler that's now coming over into the miniature side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of the tricks and tips that he does are things that he learned as a scale modeler. Like making the concrete was really cool. I had a bunch of my friends posted on this, they're like, dude, how'd you do the concrete? How'd you do like the car with the rebar? And he was like, Oh, it's just you know, it's bits of cork, it's cork mm -hmm. sheeting with like wire and paper clips in it. That he's like, I twisted them up to make like the rebar. Uh, and as soon as you hear it, you're like, Oh, that's super cool, but it's not something that you know the average model is gonna make. Oh, I know how to make rebar. Like how you know what I mean? So, yeah, I I it cracks me up how like little overlap there is between these different groups of hobbying. So um, on YouTube, I really like a YouTuber that goes by Night Shift, the Night yeah. Shift, and yep. he does a lot of armor modeling. And then lately, he's just been like scratch building facades of buildings and stuff. But yeah, like it's interesting because those techniques you could really carry over. But the problem is it'd be too realistic for what I'm doing, you know, to bring yep. the scale modeling techniques in too much. One of the things I love about um, Night Shift, uh, Martin Kovacs, is that mm -hmm. when, he, when he starts painting on a, he does all this wonderful work on a, a tank and then he starts painting a miniature, one of the mm -hmm. figures that's going to stand next to the tank and he goes, I'm not, I'm not very good at doing these. I know. <laughs> these, are completely, these are a completely different thing. And it's like, it's, he's wearing clothes. So they're just like, they're, 
that stowage you painted on the back of the tank. It's the same yeah. thing. No, yeah, some people get in their own heads. He's though, generally right? pretty humble about it, but like he is. He ace is. work. Yeah. But uh but is is nice. But uh excellent work there, Luis. We're looking forward to seeing the rest of uh yeah, for sure. uh next up we've got Matt Bowles. Matt Bowles has got a work in progress here on uh this crazy kill rig from uh the orcs. Um but uh, yeah, I'm excited to see this thing yeah. done. Yeah, that's a big project. That's a lot of plastic to cover up. It is. He's he's uh, big. For sure. Uh, but I'm Matt. I'm really loving the uh, the color that you've got going on that enormous rhinoceros squig thing. Was it, is that a squigosaur? Squigosaur, perhaps. I think I don't remember. I know it's a weird squig thing, but it's not. It has four legs, so it's not a normal squig. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm really loving the color you've got going on that. I'm looking forward to seeing uh more of the work but yeah fantastic good stuff matt love uh I love next it. up quickly uh nathan Sorensen posted some photos from the uh the grimdark hallway at adepticon um we mentioned that last week uh so hopefully we, we might have some of the guys from the grimdark hallway on uh, in a later show to uh chat a bit more about it but this uh so i don't think nathan worked on any of these tables but um we just wanted to show them off actually no he did work on the last one but uh yeah this was for a game called cauldron mm, that was i was gonna ask if it was cauldron the hill giant stuff i, I picked that up from those guys it's so fun looking at i started reading the rules yeah i think it's crazy it does look uh it does look absolutely amazing but uh I love that. I love that the giant is like on the base, and then there are little guys on the back of his base, and then there's terrain on the giant, and there's like a marker on top of it. So like he's a terrain piece <laughs> on the terrain piece. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Just uh, it looks awesome. Yeah, I really like the guys working on that. They're really fun. My favorite sticker I got from Adepticon was a gift from the uh, Hill Giant cool. guys. Awesome. Uh, next up uh, was a uh, more time game. Yes, gotta love it. Now that's living the dream, right? Yeah. yeah, so good. I mean, those. Um, I think there's a lot of three D printed terrain in there, and uh, yeah, having that like those tiles, the sort of uh, Mediterranean style tiles is just uh, amazing. Like this, yeah. this is the kind of board that whenever I see, like I, I don't really play more time. I mean, I, I, I did like I don't know, two thousand six or whatever. But right. like seeing this is like, man, I want to play on that table. Like that, it just looks fun. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of games to play on a sweet terrain like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could use this just for D and D. You can, you can use. I just want to play on your shelf. You play house. Yeah, like I, <laughs> you know, here we are talking about how like oh yeah i don't really like having to paint terrain and then we're like oh man i planned that yeah sure. well like we but like we said though it it always looks great it makes a huge yeah. difference i i still don't want to paint it <laughs> yeah. well, and it's obvious that they like they're painting you know you can see where the wood and metal brackets and stuff where they're actually picking out all the details like, yeah. i don't have, i don't have patience for that I like how you caught this. This is such a great shot, too. Like, check out the D6. The D6 hasn't hit the ground. Oh, that's right. fun. <laughs> yeah. Action pack. It's like, great. it's floating with a shadow under it. I was like, that's how action this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got this, this shot as well. I mean, the Star Wars table is so cool. Yeah. yeah. Is that Star Wars? No, those that's no, like, no. those aren't Star Wars. It looks like Stargrave, maybe. Yeah, I think... Um, the uh, some of the buildings might be from uh like imperial terrain or, or something sure. like that but yeah the evaporators the evaporators near us are from the legion accessory box or whatever the hell it's called yeah but uh yeah i think before it have gone nathan posted a photo of that um that ship in the middle um it's but, very red yeah. dwarf yeah mm. yep all looking good fantastic thanks for posting those nathan um those are cool. Cool to see uh Oli Bay uh, is painted this fantastic Usheran. I love the red yeah. hands. That's so brutal. He had, he had posted this in like one of the other threads that I occasionally get stuff from. I think Evier Metal. So yeah. I was like, I I post I poked him and I was like, can you please post this to Bill Paint Place so we can like talk about it and show it off? He's like, oh yeah, no problem. So 
Uh, I was really happy they did his. The colors on this are incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm loving the uh, like the color of the skin and the that fade through to the the um, just the ruptured skin at the elbow. Yeah, mm -hmm. the yeah, yeah I like all like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Absolutely. I really like the like the not sort of the opposite of luster he got like on all the all the gold that he's wearing. The like, his, like his shoulder pads and all of his all of his rings and like his mace uh it, it's so cool it and like some of it still has that shine like like on his necklace like parts of it are still really bright mm -hmm. yep but yeah it's so cool yeah I'd, I'd be very interested to see this figure in person he's huge cool yeah absolutely massive but no it looks fantastic thank you very much ollie for sharing that with us that's fantastic uh and yeah the fur does look sticky and stinky yeah absolutely uh awesome uh reese knight my friend from uh, my nice. factory she has this uh cool kit bash she's been messing around with i think you sort of rummaged through his bits box and mm -hmm. threw a bunch of pieces together but the uh, greens the greens on the goblin are just the best like his and and he did that thing where he's almost lighting him from sort of like three o'clock our direction so it's like his yeah, his exactly. nose is the brightest point, and then everything else is kind of like off of that. Yeah, I love the work on the skulls as well. Yeah, They're very light. clean looking. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, fun it looks... to it's fun to take those like uh, bits because like I recognize I think that's a necromancer staff and then a wizard empire wizard flask with the like the floating skull, skull. Cloud and stuff. Yeah. But like yeah. those are such fun bits, but. Uh, didn't really make it into like my wizard build and so sure. but i still have the i still have those bits so it's really nice to see <laughs> uh coming back around to use some of those favorites yeah no, definitely good. awesome work reese so uh good. next up we've got scott that was nice. been, uh, uh, guy? yeah yeah one Wonder. of the nurgles rudders uh scott was saying that um so he's been working with Matt DiPietro on his painting. Mm -hmm. I think Scott's been working with a few different painters, uh, but Matt had suggested that he just push, because uh, Scott does a lot of very desaturated greens, beautiful work on his desaturated, desaturated mm -hmm. greens. But uh, yeah, Matt just said, like, keep pushing it, keep saturating it until you you think you've yeah. gone sort of too far and then go. I mean, it's up. it's 2024. Drab colors are out. Grimdark is out. <laughs> <laughs> We're going colors, guys. Like his his here, his but... boots, his boots, his pants, and very specifically his gloves are very much Scott. Like that is like the Scott that we're used to seeing. And his his color work is great. Like his lighting is really cool. His transitions mm -hmm. are great. But the pushing the shoulder pads, like his his football gear, I mean, like pushing that to that crazy, like almost yellow, like electric green. Like that's it's really really cool. It's yeah. really neat to see Scott like trying something. Like the skin's that. got great treatment too, though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, there's there's no like, it it, it has. I, I mean, it's funny to say like, like vitality to it when <laughs> the rotted guy, but you know, like the warm hues and stuff in the in the shadows is looking good. Oh, I do think it's hilarious that as a football player, he's not wearing a jersey. Right. Like he's he's not in uniform technically. Yeah, well, I mean, you know who, what team he's playing for when he's got a split open gut with maggots falling out. That's yeah. true. I, I was going to say vitality though. is 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 probably a pretty good word for it because it's you can see the vitality oozing out of him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fantastic work, Scott. Looks awesome. Uh, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, Sean Gleason posted uh, this mini for us. This is a great model. And now my head is um, basically, I, I just lost where it's from. Uh, oh, no, I think he said it's um, from McClay Studio. Uh, I think oh, that's really? right. I think that's right. Yeah. I really like the transition on her dress. It goes from like that bright, almost like spring yellow all the way to like a dark blue on the, yeah. on the other side of it. Yeah. Like I said, Grimdark is out. <laughs> you guys heard it here first. Yeah. You heard it here first on Bill Paint Place. Sean but still, is still buy sludge. Out. Still buy sludge, but Grim Dark is <laughs> yeah, buy sludge, but it has yeah. to be all like pastels and like electric colors and yeah. yep. Indeed. But new uh, version this year, 2024 electro sludge. Yeah. Yeah. 
But no, excellent work, Sean. Uh, great colors, wonderfully vibrant, mm -hmm. on trend. Apparently, she looks like a um, <laughs> uh, like a way watcher. Yeah, I love those figures. Yeah, yeah, the so. old wood elves are some of my favorite models. Yeah, that yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, and then next up, uh, now for something completely different. Uh, mm -hmm. Here is a uh, a wear rabbit for Easter. Rabbit. So this is this is a Ral Partha alternate sculpt that they did. So I have a bunch of the orcs that are this exact same model. Right. The feet, the hand. The only thing that's different on this model is that they sculpted on a tail and they changed his head. Mm. Right. It's the same model. Yeah. Really interesting. That's fun. Yeah. Absolutely. He's cool. super cool though. I, I love this guy. This is an old school all metal Ral Partha one piece. Yep. Josh, yeah, seems to be doing uh, some old Ralph Partha figures for uh, for quite a while. So, yeah, Ralph Partha legacy figures. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's what this is. It also so, has that classic, like he's printed, like in in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. So the whole right, model yeah. is basically this way. Like he has a shield in front, his axe behind. So he's I, just like one line. I do, I do that with my figure. I paint or sculpt my figures to be a single piece cast. Yeah, um, it's not quite as strict as this one, but like. Um, they're fun to paint because, like, you don't have to reach your paintbrush in a place that can't be reached. Yep. You know, so it's a, it's a fun That's experience. Good. Uh, awesome good. stuff. Um, Sean, this is something else that uh, that Stephen does is uh, once his uh, palette paper, basically he uses his wet palette and fills up each each spot with paint. Uh, and once he's done, he creates a landscape out of it. That's fun. Uh, so the um, the painting behind the rabbit here is uh, is one of his paintings from uh, his palette paper. That's so cool. And this is his latest one. So I'm sure we'll see this uh, pop up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that is uh, the end of that. But no, excellent work there, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for uh posting everything in the build paint play community page uh it's always very cool to go through each week and uh check them all out um we definitely uh we definitely enjoy it but awesome oh, uh man. so we have run we've run a little bit late yeah yeah <laughs> uh, thank you very much uh sean for joining us this evening uh um, oh, yeah I, hope, uh, I think everybody has really enjoyed uh listening to you talk about uh relling Relic, Relic, blade. Blade. Re Relic blade. Relic blade. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm I'm so grateful. Thanks for letting me come on the show and talk to you guys about what I think about I mean, you know, getting all philosophical about what it means to be an artist and what it means to be a maker. So yeah. very fun time. I always love the the sort of the deep dives, the the understanding the whys behind yeah. uh, things that are happening. And uh so yeah, it has been awesome to uh, hear your perspective and uh, and your take on things, and um, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to to join us for that. It's been very cool. Uh, so I think at the end we have to say thank you to the Army Painter uh, as our sponsor. Yep. Um, thank you to Sean for coming on and joining us. Uh, down in the notes below, there are a whole bunch of uh, links to the various things. Um, Relicblade.com. Knocking Studio YouTube channel, Sean's Instagram. Uh, the you can go and sign up for the, the art of uh, Kickstarter that's kicking off at the end of the month. Um, uh, all sorts of other things. I think mm -hmm. there's a link to uh, you can buy a Bill Payne Play T-shirt if you'd like to as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I will include I will include uh, stickers for as long as I have them as well. So fantastic. Yes. So we have the wonderful uh, Bill Payne Play stickers. Uh, which was a lot of fun to be able to hand those out at, uh, at the show. Uh, super cool. Uh, so I think is We're there good? anything else that we've got? Uh, Sean, any, any final, final words? Oh, I just, I hope everyone has like a really fun time and, you know, get excited about some hobby projects and get stuck in pretty soon. Nice. Uh, yeah. And you can check out relicplay.com if you're looking for a new hobby project. Excellent. You know, it's fun. It's small scale, so if you want to explore a new painting style too, you know, you can. That's a good, <laughs> good opportunity. Messing around with it, definitely cool. 
Awesome. Okay, Jake. Uh, All right. Everybody, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, if you guys get a chance before you leave, make sure you guys like, put a comment, do all that stuff to help the algorithm do the thing. Uh, <laughs> if you are listening to us on SoundCloud or Spotify or iHeartRadio or whatever, um, it would be great if you guys popped on our Facebook page and joined the group so that you can post stuff if you're working on it. Uh, if you get a chance also, I know there's not a lot of crossover, but if you go to our YouTube channel and like and subscribe, whenever we do updates and stuff, you'll get kind of dinged when we do that. So you'll get a little uh, notification. Um, otherwise, everybody have a great week. Be safe. Paint some stuff. Uh, and as always, do not forget to build, build paint, paint, play. play. <laughs> Shut up and sit down.